So, welcome, Barbara, to this uh, living room. Yeah, and, beautiful uh, living room. I love it. Yeah, it's a really, really beautiful room. I've actually done some recordings in this room. Yeah, yeah it seems really like a, a really great room for recording. Yeah. And welcome to this uh, dining room, cozy talk, artist talk. Yeah. And uh, uh, you have to know, at some point, uh, we'll make a little intermission and we'll collect some questions from you. So if you any questions from you arises during our talk, then please uh, note them down and uh, we'll collect them in a little intermission during the talk here. Okay? Mm -hmm. I can see you're ready. <laughs> 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 That's very good. Well, um, what a week. Yeah, crazy. Incredible week. Yeah. Worth waiting for. One year postponed because yeah. of the pandemic. Yeah. 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 And so luckily that we could actually do it. With people. With people. With an audience that yeah. was so amazing. Really, really yeah. amazing. Yeah. And you have been rehearsing every day. Yeah. You're doing, uh, we have had the cinematic. Yeah. The, the movie. That was super yeah. nice. The movie yeah. night. <laughs> Great, hot evening. Yeah. Yeah. Hot evening. And uh, two concerts, Thursday and Friday. Yeah. Both the Danish Wave Christian Orchestra amazing concerts yeah I've actually it's one of the greatest concerts i've ever been to oh i must say thanks. yeah don't you think so <laughs> it yeah crazy. it was i mean it was just so outstanding out of this world and equilibrium yesterday yeah equilibrium yeah and now we're here yeah. and uh, you uh, when you go uh, abroad you rent an airbnb yeah. uh, apartment right and yeah. uh, you also ask uh, Esten to take care of, uh, uh, make sure you could have a bike. And a helmet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, a small bike, and a, bike and a helmet for helmet. getting around yeah. in the city. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and why is that? You prefer Airbnb and uh, a bike? Yeah, well, I, I prefer Airbnb because um, I like to be able to really look after myself. And, you know, because I spend, or normally I spend about 11 months of the year on the road, Staying in a hotel um, and eating restaurant food that I can't cook, you know, like it's not very good for me. And I can't usually, often in hotels, you can't open the windows. Um, there's, you know, it's, it's not like being at home. And so I really like to try and create a home situation. But I think the, one of the biggest things is the food because I really like to control what I eat and how I eat and when I eat. And so if I can, go to the market, and I've been to Copenhagen enough times, you know, I, I know the market, I know which, the, the, the Torvahalle, I know which fish place I'm gonna go to, I know what I'm gonna buy, and, you know, I have like my routines. And so it gives me um, a much stronger sense of, of self agency. And as far as the bicycle, um, normally I try, I, you know, I'm staying in Vesterbro because I thought, okay, Vesterbro is like 15 minutes to here, 15 minutes to the radio, on the bike, I asked Esben, or I think Esben offered to get me a bike, and so it just means that I can have a little bit more of a normal life. I don't have to be in taxis or get driven around or ask people to get stuff for me. It's, this makes a really big difference, mm -hmm. you know? I've been on the road for, well, I left home when I was 17, and then I moved to Europe when I was 23, so it's been 27 years on the road of like big touring. So anything that I can do to make myself feel more I comfortable, yeah. I'm gonna do that. <laughs> and I always encourage like, you know, in the old days before Airbnb, um, you, didn't, you couldn't rent apartments, you didn't have a choice, you know. And um, now, you know, I always tell the young singers like, Yes, the, if you're doing an engagement with an orchestra, yeah, they're going to offer you a hotel. But you can say, I would like to rent an apartment. What is the top, what is the nightly fee that I can have to rent my apartment? Like, you can always do that, but you have to... I, when you're young, sometimes you just think, oh, well, they only offered this. But you can always, you know, kindly negotiate and look after yourself in that way if you, if you so desire. So do you actually cook your own meals during such a week? Then? Oh, yeah. Uh, um, I cook my own meals. I make yeah. my lunches. I bring my food for before the show. Mm -hmm. I'm very specific when I eat, what I eat, um, because I know if I'm going to do Love Why Men, I don't want to walk out there 
and realize after 20 minutes, mm, my blood sugar is pretty low. Like I have to, you know, I, I need to control that. So I'll, I'll make sure that I've cooked something the night before, fish or chicken uh, with vegetables, steamed vegetables, very, very boring s stuff when I'm <laughs> working. <laughs> and then it sounds great to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, so that I, you know, I, I can have enough strength to do what I'm going to do up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, eliminating the surprises as much as possible. Yeah. We're going to talk about a lot about your concept and the program and yeah. everything. But uh, before that, I would just like to ask you, because uh, now I've been close to you during this uh, week. Yeah. And uh, I'll follow you. And um, and I'm I'm deeply moved. I'm uh, totally amazed, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and uh, it's amazing what you do. And I just came to the thought that you give so much to people, mm. and you've created two movements, equilibrium and momentum. We'll mm. get back to that as well. You give so much. Do you ever receive anything, or are you able to receive? Oh yeah. Yeah. I think so. Um, I mean, I guess, I mean, it's a qu question of, of energy. And I do seek how I will receive energy. And I'm quite quick with it. Like even when I walked into the room, you know, I connect. I s there's certain faces and you just kind of go, zip, and then you feel that you're getting something back immediately. But also with an orchestra, you know, you can feel um, the energy of the room, you can feel the energy of the group, and you can feel the, the individual energy. And you're, you're just awakening um, connections all the time. So, you know, it became clear to me when I walked into the first rehearsal of La Voix Men that Christina, the concertmaster, is fantastic energy. Mm. She's super open, she's super willing. Uh, we had, you know, we've never worked together as conductor to to violinist before, and yet I knew she was going to be, I, I could feel already within five minutes, sh okay, she's going to give a lot. Mm -hmm. And so that, that helps me because then we're in an exchange. Mm -hmm. Because if it's only one directional, mm -hmm. then we have nothing. But if you think of, of omnidirectional um, collaboration, and also it brings me to the idea of resonance, because when I'm singing, power and resonance. When I'm singing, if I, if I send the sound like that, this way, it's, if I, I, I have the feeling that I push it. If I make the sound like this, then I'm working in two directions. A lot of singers, you'll he have heard drinking in the sound, right? You've heard the teacher or inhale the sound or whatever. But it's not just for singers, it's for any instrument. And the idea of power being omnidirectional, of resonance being omnidirectional, so that we resonate ev all through the back, through the sides, everything. And um, yeah, I suppose that for me, that's, that's the way I think. Mm -hmm. So to come back to your question, do I receive energy constantly? Yeah. And, you know, equilibrium, you know, someone like Antoine, um, that guy is a powerhouse. And I, I rehire, I mean, all these people, but to use Antoine as an example, you know, I added an engagement in March this year, last minute, I thought, who do I want? I want Antoine. I want him on my team. I want his energy around me. I got another, added another concert in, in Aix-en-Provence at the Easter Festival in April, very last minute. Antoine. I want Antoine. And so, because it's, it, it feeds the room so much. It's so inspiring. And it gives, you know, gives you back the power so that you're just in this constant mm. exchange. Mm. But I'm sure that you're professionally and musically given and receive. Mm -hmm. But I'm also thinking in a larger life like perspective. Like in a big life. The ability of actually uh, receiving. Or are you most a giver? Um, I think... <laughs> I think it's difficult because my schedule, my life is so tight. Like when I don't have... I don't have a lot of free time. 
even in this year, crazily enough, I didn't have a lot of free time. And I'm learning about these things because... That was my point. Yeah, I'm <laughs> trying to learn about <laughs> these things because, like, I'm super organized, I'm super fast, and my mind just goes... Tick, 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 tick. So I know if this happens, then, then the next chain of events is like, I'm a very consequential thinker. I know my mind. And so if I, oftentimes, if I ask someone to do something for me, it, it would have been quicker. I would have had it done before I even explained to them what I wanted them to do. So I do have assistants or PAs, but, and, I, and, and, and I have had a wonderful agent, uh, Tuchetez, who is the one person actually who, moves quicker than me, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's, it's, um, it is hard to, and it, in anything, it's like also in cooking, also in, in the house and everything, you know, I am, <laughs> I, am <laughs> I don't know if I would say control freak, but I just, I like to have my hands on everything. Right. Yeah. yeah. So you're, you're uh, losing the control can be a little bit of a challenge for you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's not it's not control like as far as um gripping. No. Which is also has something to do with singing because you you control the sound by guiding it. If you grip it, it's not free. Mm -hmm. But if you guide the sound, if you're um yeah, you're Manipulating, wi manipulate coming from the les mains, the hands. So, mm. manipulating in a good way. That's um, it's the same as in singing. Like I don't, I don't want to be like this, and because then it can't move and it can't flow. But in, on the other hand, I do like to to have have it in my hands. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the concert on Thursday. Started yeah. with the good quote. Yeah. Yeah. Niemand wird sich selber kennen. Yeah. No one can really know themselves. Yeah. And uh, I would like to transfer that into a, d a different quote um, uh, that was by Oscar Wilde. Yeah. It's a quote that I've always said to my own uh, children, yeah. to my son, to my daughter. Be yourself. Everyone else is already taken. <laughs> That's good. That's right? good. Yeah. Like that. Now, so uh, being yourself, or Søren Kierkegaard uh, talked about becoming yourself. Yes. Yeah. And and uh, but how do you become yourself? Because uh, you have you have to try out different things mm. to find out your way mm -hmm. of becoming yourself. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, actually a quite a big mm -hmm. theme, also a philo philo philosophical uh, mm -hmm. theme. Um, but on the performance on Thursday. You have a, an amazing background, outstanding background as a soprano singer. Uh, you have turned into the conducting part, uh, which is uh, also really amazing. And uh, congratulations with Gothenburg and yeah. all those yes. collaborations. It's really, uh, it's really amazing to, to see what you're doing. But then you have also created uh, a really new art form, conducting and singing which is a totally different thing. It's neither conducting or singing. It's, it's a new right. art form, which I find uh, very innovative, very modern, very uh, uh, breathtaking, and very much you. Yeah. It's, it's really you, it's really yourself. So now, in this part of your life, I would say that you really found a path where uh, uh, being, uh, you are really yourself with this kind of art form, singing and conducting, with artifacts, gestures, physical, you yeah. know. So how did you find this way? Well, it's funny because it wasn't actually my idea the first time. You know, that, that ligati piece that I sing and conduct sometimes? You maybe you saw the black leather outfit. And that wasn't my idea. Mm -hmm. um, and even the conducting, what had been happening for me around 2007, six, seven, I was doing a lot of concerts where there was no conductor. And so, but I wasn't conducting. It was just really, really high level of chamber music. And then um, several colleagues of mine 
like the guy that ran the orchestra of Radio France at the time, um, and a few other people around the world had said, th they said things like t to me like, you sing like a conductor. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> or or you, you, you're, you're, leading, you're, you're leading, or you're, things that indicated that. And, <clears throat> and then one of them said, I think you have to try this. I think you have to try conducting. And, and he, it was his idea, Rene, it was his idea that I do the ligeti as a sing conduct. And I thought, <laughs> that's a good idea, because it's all about um, power, that, that particular piece and a control freak, and losing control, and hierarchy, and da, 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 and all this mystery around it. And I thought, yeah, that's a, that's a really good idea. And he chose another piece for the same program that I would do as well, which was the Le Renard, The Fox, by Stravinsky, for four male soloists and a 15-piece chamber ensemble. And it was a really good choice of music, and so, I mean, you can imagine what it, like I hadn't trained to be a conductor, but I was, I trained my whole life to be a musician. And um, so I prepared for that one engagement. I didn't prepare f to change my life. I didn't prepare to become a conductor. I prepared for one engagement. And that engagement was kind of a big deal. And it led immediately. Like, it's like the next morning, ding, 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 you know, on the phone. And, and I realized from that um, experience of conducting, it was a very emotionally powerful moment for me because I felt um, different than when I was singing. I felt a kind of care and responsibility for everyone that was extremely meaningful and fulfilling for me that I had, hadn't had before. When you're just a singer, you can be a bit more petulant. You can be a bit more like me, me, me. Um, but you can't do that if you're the conductor, or you shouldn't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 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 um, so it, it really, I thought, I need to explore that. Mm -hmm. And what's been happening over the years, like you were talking about the gesture and the sing conduct, I find pieces that work as a sing conduct, like Luonotar by Sibelius, totally works as a sing conduct because it's about the creation of the world. Mm. And it makes perfect sense to find the gesture to do that piece. La Voix Humaine is an opera that I had sung at Paris Opera, and I knew almost immediately this must be a sing conduct. It must be, because it's all about fantasy and imagination. Mm. But when I was developing La Voix Humaine, um, for this show, uh, so I developed, I had the idea uh, with the cameras and so on, and then I started rehearsing it with, with my pianist in November. We had one performance in January, and then this was the second performance here. And I started rehearsing with my pianist, and I was, I was singing it and conducting it more kind of normal, but I was trying to find the meaning of the gestures. I was letting it come like you know, these gestures, or this gesture, or this, this gesture. And I was trying to let the gestures just come up without thinking too much. I was trying to just let them come in. So it was this interesting process and um, to try and work by feeling and, and let all the possibilities, and you see like when I, even when I tell you I'm the, 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 I'm thinking about how the brain was just coming up with possibilities of gesture, and I tried all these things, and and I would think this works, this works, this works. Write it in, go, 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 and keep keeping going in long stretches. So not thinking, and here I will do that, and here I will do that, so that it it was in a kind of brain flow, and without analyzing it, because then you get interesting layers of meaning mm -hmm. that I don't even know what they are which is my preference. I don't want to know everything. I don't want to know what everything meant. I don't want to know why, why L uh, is punching. And also in the, in the film, in the Strauss film that, that we had made in November as well, like why was that in there? I don't even remember how that happened. But it became material and it, it worked. And 
And there's no reason why an orchestra needs, you know, this for a downbeat or this for a downbeat. You know, there's no reason why they can't well, follow one or the happens, other. What happens, you know, uh, it must be a very different pizzicato when it's like <laughs> yeah, this, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. And I mean, you know, I think gesture, there is, there is one point in La Voix Man when I say, um, oh, you're right, I'll be a good girl. Uh, tu as raison, je serai sage, I will answer all of your questions. And at the point when, when that happens in, in, um, in the opera, I start conducting like a perfect three. <laughs> <laughs> tu, as, tu as raison, oui, je t'écoute, je serai sage. And because I'm saying, yes, 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 I'll be a good conductor for a second, you know, like mm. we need a perfect three, you know, do we really need to see that triangle? to be the musicians, to become what we are. And so, um, yeah, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of play for me and, and also encouraging the orchestra. Like I was talking to um, the, 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 cha the chairperson of the orchestra, a bassoon player, and I said, do you remember when you learned how to follow a conductor? Do you remember when you learned the rules of one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five? I mean, do, do, we, do we remember when we learned that? I don't. I don't remember. So does it... I'm, I'm fascinated by communication, collaboration. I'm not very fascinated by power and hierarchy. <laughs> I find those things really, mm, you know, so I, I feel like tradi tradition, I'm, I'm curious about those things, but I want to understand why tradition may stick. Also in our business, why do we have hierarchy the way it exists? Um, how, how do managers and agents and, and, and casting agents and casting directors and how do those people end up being in, in the positions that they're in? Are they coming from a creative and artistic perspective? Mm -hmm. What is the agency? What is the responsibility of the artists to be self, um, to know themselves and to make sure that the people around them know them and are supporting what they do? These, these are all like issues that are super, super important for, for me and I, I'm trying to make them important for a lot of people. <laughs> Definitely. I would li like to go back to this point where you're uh, getting proposed to perform it and conduct it, yeah. and that you actually say yes to yeah, do yeah. it, right? Because uh, we have, I don't know if you in English have this concept of seeing brands points. Can you say of that? Of what? Brands points, you know. Brownie points. Uh, points where you can kind of junctions in your life, for uh, oh. what would be the oh, English Oh, milestones. milestones. Mi yeah, kind of milestones, but mm. it's more points where uh, suddenly you you take a decision yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and turning points uh, turning points and you may not quite know why you take this decision yeah, yeah, yeah. it may be quite intuitive yeah uh, in, uh, when i was brought up uh, my father he's a physicist scientist so we have to watch every year the nobel nobel uh, prize yeah. uh, uh, ceremony and um, and then they always had this round table discussion afterwards and he always asks the same question every year at the end of the discussion, intuition. Yeah. Yeah. How, what does intuition mean? How does it work? Mm. Which is quite interesting because it turns out that scientists, they are very intuitive. Yeah. And, uh, and often they seek for something, uh, but they will find something different. Yes. And why do they change some things? They yeah. use their intuition. So yeah. how? And um, I just thought of... Uh, uh, so uh, when, when we go back to this point, you are being asked, uh, would you like to conduct and, uh, uh, and uh, sing at the same time? Mm. Why do you say yes? What, ha what happened in, uh, in you in that moment? Because that's kind of the turning point. Um, yeah, it was absolutely intuition. It was the, the gut feeling. And I did, I knew, I knew that I, once I, I mean, I knew that I should say yes, so I said yes, because I knew that that was the right decision. And once I said yes, I had that f this feeling like this is, this is gonna be something. Mm -hmm. I knew, yeah. I knew. So you felt that immediately, mm -hmm. yeah. 
And that was two years before I did it. And I, I thought, mm, you know, yeah. you, you galvanize energy. Yeah. You but know? You, and then you just focus for that one performance and then it's a war for afterwards. Yeah. yeah. So that very intuitive uh, decision at that time turned out to be a very important decision, yeah. actually. Because and now it's really a, a certain path which is, makes a very unique Yes. Barbara Hennigan in the music world, right? Yeah, and yeah. I really have been becoming myself. I mean, yeah. I, I, I think, you know, we think about purpose and we think about, you know, why are, how can we be of service? You know, why are we here? Why, you know, these existential questions and what is our purpose? And for me, the purpose is to be of service. So. The medium is music because that's my medium. That's mm. what I've had since I was a child. Mm. So, and we are here. So, I am here to serve the music. And um, I'm just seeking the way that I can best do that. But I also realize that there is also purpose in presence um, as a leader, as a you know, of course, at this point in time, to be uh, a woman doing some of the things I'm doing, there is a purpose for that. There is purpose in how do I want to lead? How do I want to collaborate? You know, mm. philosophically, on a social level, politically, psychologically, all of these aspects, I, I, I know that they're all important things and mm. I don't have to go into them too much but there's like just like it's like having little feelers out mm. and you're just kind of like okay yeah, this is working here and you know and about intuition and choices um Søren Kierkegaard he said life have to be lived forwards and understood backwards yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, I don't know if, uh, if you're familiar with the Steve Jobs commencement speech from Stanford no, University. I didn't see uh, it. it's great speech oh, I uh, love it, good it's speeches. back in uh, 2005 I think so okay. and there he talks about uh, connecting the dots uh -huh. so which is actually you know understanding backwards why did you take the yes. choices you took mm. yeah and uh, he he gives the example that um, uh, he, he was adopted, and uh, and uh, the parents uh, promised that he would go in college uh, to the uh, real parents, and uh, and finally he reached the age and uh, they saved money for that he would go in college, and it turned out to be a disaster for him, and um, and then he wanted to skip, and uh, that was uh, very dramatic. Uh, but then for half a year he liked to to do whatever he wanted to do, you know, to make his own choices and for some reason he was very obsessed with calligraphy you know mm. how you write and yeah. how uh, the writing expresses mm. yourself mm. so he chose uh, calligraphy, calligraphy but he didn't know for which reason you know it was just purely that he just fell for this uh, decision mm -hmm. later on when he stood in the garage to create the very first Mac computer then he decided from the very beginning that was, it was essential for a computer to have different fonts. Uh -huh. Because at that point, uh, uh, computers didn't have uh, different fonts. No. So he decided uh, from the very beginning that we ha need different fonts. So uh -huh. therefore, the Mac computer was the first computer in the world which had fonts. Wow. And the reason for that is basically because he took this course of calligraphy. Yeah. Years be before, yeah. for some reason, he yeah. didn't know. Have you experienced things like that in your life where you have taken choices of doing something mm. and, then you re and you don't quite know why? Mm. And then much later in your life, you realize, okay, this was the reason I, I took this yes. course or had this interest. Yes, for sure. I think um, it has partly to do with meeting people, um, certain people that you bring into your life. Um, I think, like, I had certain interests, like Tai Chi was super interesting to me when I was 23. Okay. And Tai Chi, um, I mean, I had to do it on a course that I was taking. And so Tai Chi a is related to Qigong, Qigong exercises, you know, mm. which are, 
you know, they're, they're not, they're very simple breath-related exercises. There's a whole bunch of different ones you can do. That they're good for the breathing and good for warming up the body and so on. But Tai Chi is a martial art, and it's really slow. And on the course that I was taking, I liked it so much at the school that I went to this other place and I took in, in London, and I took Tai Chi like three, f three, four, five times a week sometimes I went, every day. Mm -hmm. And one of the exercises you did was called pushing hands. And with pushing hands, you're with another person who's on the, facing you, and they're pushing your hand, and you're, you're responding to their energy, and you're pushing their energy. And, and in fact, because it's a martial art, one of the aspects of the exercise can be to throw the other person off balance, and, or to knock them down. And, or you can just be pushing hands. And for me, I was so fascinated by that, and I was 23 years old. And later on, I brought, like, it was like th th two summers ago, I guess, I had, a, one, on one of my equilibrium courses, I found a Tai Chi master, and he came and started doing Tai Chi with EQ people. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't really done Tai Chi in 15 years or something. And it, I, I was like, this is, this is conducting. This is making music. This is mm. all of these things. This is all feeding that. And they are completely related to each other. And somehow, I, that choice that I made when I was 23 wasn't because I had any idea I would ever become a conductor or a leader. I was just trying to learn how to sing and breathe, you know. Mm. And yet, it was... It was a big milestone for me. And that, that Tai Chi teacher, actually, in London, he said to me, I, at one point I had to make a big choice because I was trying to figure out what direction I wanted to go as a singer. And I, I remember going to him and I said to him, John, I, there's a lot of things about the business that I don't like and I'm not sure I want to be in that classical music singer business. I, mm. I, and he said, and, and I said, I don't like the rules. And he said, you can't change the rules until you become captain of the team. And I was like... Exactly. And so, <laughs> well, <laughs> and then, yeah. so I, I was like, oh, yeah, okay. So I kind of ended up often becoming captain of the team. But then, a year or two ago, John Zorn, this incredible jazz musician that I work with, and he's an extraordinary human being, person, just out of this world. And I've, I've had the, the honor to work with John quite a lot, and we continue to work quite a lot. I think we're going to come here in a year or two. And uh, anyway, I was telling him that story, and John said, Barbara, you're not captain of the team. You made your own game. <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> actually, yeah. <laughs> exactly. You've made your own game. That's amazing. But that all happened at that mm. time, and those things stick mm. with you, you know. Last year, when we talked about uh, and preparing for this artist talk one year ago, yeah. we had a phone conversation. Yeah, and, so uh, nice. and we talked about um, uh, the verb to lead. Yes. Remember? No. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, to lead, it comes from Greek lighter. Yeah. And uh, in Greek, the real uh, meaning of it, it, it has this uh, twofolded meaning or double meaning. It equally means to seek the way mm -hmm. and to lead the way. Mm -hmm. And in Danish, it's the same. At mm -hmm. lead, mm -hmm. it also means it has this uh, double folded meaning. In English, it's more the commander bridge. Yes. It's more one, yeah. uh, one way yeah. meaning. Yeah. Uh, but in the Greek, Danish uh, meaning uh, to seek the way and to lead the way, I, th I find it very interesting in leadership, mm. but also in leading yourself. Mm. Because uh, seeking the way is about curiosity and being open minded, and leading the way is about trusting your intuition courage, mm. taking risks. Taking risks. Yeah. 
So, uh, so what do you, uh, if you think about how you have let yourself mm. in your life, and in this double folded meaning, mm. uh, what co comes to your mind in, in these two parts of of uh, seeking and leading? Um, I think I look back to to those turning points, like 17 years old, leaving home. So yeah. that that was. I was still in, in high school, and I wanted to go to this performing arts high school, like a fame high school. And I applied, and it, it was in Toronto, and I'm from Nova Scotia, th so that's two hours by airplane. Yeah? And so I applied, but, it, but that, was, that was a first big thing. I mean, that's a big commitment, to, to leave your family. Mm. And, and when I got to that school, I, I thought I would be you know, this kid from Nova Scotia, and they were all going to be sophisticated city people. And in fact, I ended up being a leader at that school in the one year that I had. Mm -hmm. That was maybe, and I'd always been a kind of leader, I think, oh well, now I have to go even further back, because <laughs> I have a twin brother. I have a twin brother, and um, when we were little, I kind of led him a lot. I mean, we were partners, but I led him a lot as far as organizational stuff mm -hmm. goes. And what's really interesting is that now, he and I, I mean, we talk almost every day, but he and I are on such a level of, um, like, we help each other a lot. He helps me mm -hmm. so much, but when we were kids, it wasn't like that at all. I was the boss. <laughs> but now he he is the leader, and okay. it's very very interesting. He watched okay. the the performance yesterday. Yeah. He he, um, you know he he knows a lot about music, and so I think. I, I think the change of leadership is quite interesting. I would also give the example of Reinbert DeLeo, who was my extraordinary um, mentor. He was he was a pianist, a, co a composer, a conductor, mm -hmm. and. Interestingly enough, when we worked together as a duo, uh, he passed away a year ago, but when we worked together as a duo for 10 years as a piano voice duo, he led everything. I, he was the soloist and I was the accompanist. That's how it was. So he was playing <laughs> piano, but I was following him. <laughs> yeah. And then over the course of those 10 years, he he was one of those people who was eternally curious and and but it w he knew how he wanted something to go he was an extraordinary musician and but as the years went on i i suppose he was leading but i was getting closer to him until then we were both leading and both following and by the end of our collaboration when we finally recorded the Vienna CD in 2017 and we toured it and and our settee and there was a, a kind of the balance had finally reached what it had to be between us just in time you know just in 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 time and that has to do with the leader being able to let the the others lead like and that's something i notice with equilibrium like i'm letting them lead also mm -hmm. i'm i trust i'm putting trust in them you know over the course of time together you you start to you know i'll often before i'll say what i'll what i think i'll say well what did you think well how did you think you know and if they if somebody asks me a question i will often respond with well what do you think before i would answer and so you're just you're you're trying to lead exactly. Yeah. That's a curiosity thing. Yes, yeah. exactly. The seeking part the seeking, and, uh, and then yeah. uh, taking a decision or yeah. going a certain uh, direction. Because yes. I think also artistically you have this enormous curiosity yeah. uh, and uh, also being open-minded. You yeah. know, to to whatever yeah. could be uh, s something that challenges you. You're something where you're a little bit out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Or maybe quite a lot out of your comfort yeah. zone and have the courage. So I think that's a really a line in, in your decisions, which is really, really interesting. I think like taking risks is super important, but the risks have to be 
there's a, there's a kind of controlled risk that one can take. And also, um, putting the, the parameters into place where you feel that you are, that you can take the risk. Like when I did Lulu for the first time with Krzysztof Warlikowski and I was on point shoes. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine, 40 years old on point shoes for the first time in my life. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, but that was a controlled risk because I knew, I believed very deeply in Warlikowski and, mm -hmm. and it was the first time that he and I were gonna work together and I knew that, that okay, we are, we are we're ready to do this, you know. Okay. We have another project, um, which we may or may not end up doing, because the risk factors we can't control well enough. And it's, it, it, I know in my gut that I cannot join that project until we have the right balance of the entire team. And so I'm still waiting, and I will not, you know, it's very interesting, because I think, you know, risk is, it's a joyful risk if you know, if you have the feeling that, okay, I need this and this and this to be able to take that risk. Mm -hmm. You can't just go, Ugh, you know. No. There has to be a kind of foundation around it. Mm -hmm. And that's with anything. That's also with your singing and with your, and in any of our respective fields, we know this, right? I mean, you know, we have to warm up really well so that we can be spontaneous in our singing. We have to know our music inside out so that we can stretch a line, right? We, you know, we need to eat properly and, and sleep well, and, and then we may have that little bit of extra breath mm -hmm. for the super long phrase that we, we couldn't manage until today, you know? Mm -hmm. I'd like to go back to Oscar Wilde, be yourself, everyone else is already taken. Um, and equilibrium, yeah. uh, because um, I've noticed uh, you, you have a, now you have an extremely personal approach to Lavoie women, which is really you. But I've also noticed that Aphrodite has performed Lavoie women yeah. also. Yeah. So how how do you let her be herself in that <laughs> part, <laughs> having such a strong? wholehearted interpreta interpretation yeah. yourself, you know. Well, when I was doing La Voix Humaine at Paris Opera, um, I actually, Aphrodite asked me or I invited her or something like that, but she came to the rehearsals. And um, I, mean, I think she was about, she was learning the piece at that time. And then later when I was in Hamburg singing Lulu, she also came and watched rehearsals in Hamburg uh, for Lulu, and I remember us doing a little coaching on La Voix Humaine, but once we started coaching, I remember I, we didn't work for very long, because I said, you know what, there's nothing I can help you with this. It's so personal, the piece, mm. and you just have to find your way in the piece, and she found her way, Okay. you know? Mm -hmm. So it, I didn't really have much to do with it. I think what I was able to help her with, um, you know, was decisions that she had to make about path and um, when I was when I am conducting her, you know, I am I can be super direct with her and like her performance yesterday, for me I was I was just blown away because I know how she was singing when I met her in 2017. And four years later, mm. especially after this year and not having had performance chances, mm. the presence that she has, the mental discipline work that she's done to get herself to be able to perform like that yesterday. I mean, for me, I, I watched it again on the YouTube like before I mm. came here today, and I was like, that's just top class, just top class singing. Mm. I mean, to, s to sing the lines that she sang yesterday, like in Norden, the second song, mm. without, without taking a, an extra breath, I was just like, it, what, she's 27 or something like that. It was, it was a fantastic. Yeah. That was really, really amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you have these two movements, equilibrium yeah. and momentum. Yeah. And uh, and you even donated the whole entire <laughs> signing price of one million kroner to these movements. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's such such a decision, and it uh, it's surely uh, it um, it's really um, 
something that's important to you, these young artists' lives, mm -hmm. right after they've finished yeah. their education, at that point in life, yes. the forthcoming years of uh, four to seven years after that. Yes. Um, now, is, is there a certain reason for you that you are that concerned about? I mean, did you self feel quite left alone? Mm. Or uh, would you have wished a different time for yourself at that time? Mm. Or, you know, w w what is the um, reason for this particular concern for this yeah. part? Why did I choose? Yeah. S because both equilibrium and momentum are initiatives which are creating a um, performance opportunities, support, workshops, training, discipline, relationship um, for young professional artists in the first substantial phase of their career. So I want people who have finished their studies and who are in that first substantial phase. And I, on purpose, I didn't put an age limit on it because who knows, sometimes you come from another field or, um, you know, in singing it's often 30 or 32. It's like a cutoff point. But I don't do it like that because I know some people and some voices need longer to mature. But those first seven years, let's say, when you're out there, I, I, I looked around when I was creating the initiative, I thought there's so many young artist programs, like training programs, but there's not a lot of mentorship programs. And that is what I, so I, I purposely went there because I thought, okay, that gap needs attention. And um, I do remember from my career, you know, I had moved to Europe when I was 23, so I was away from home, I was in foreign places, this was before you could make, like, this is when phone calls cost money, like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, and you, you didn't have Skype, and there wasn't internet, you know, and it was extremely lonely, and any of you that saw Taking Risks film the other night, or you can probably see it online somewhere, uh, you know, the, the guests that I had brought in to EQ for that particular workshop were Natalie Desay and Daniel Harding, and they both talked about the loneliness, the isolation that one experiences. Mm -hmm. So I kind of thought, yeah, let's create a team. Let's create a team of like-minded people who will support each other and who will um, be learning from each other. And I, for equilibrium, I'm the guide, you know, I'm kind of, I bring everybody together, and, and for Momentum, which is a slightly different initiative, because Momentum I created as a result of the pandemic, you know, because I was having all these Zooms with Equilibrium while we were in the lockdown. In France, we were in like a total confinement, and I was having these Zooms with Equilibrium people, and they were saying to me, you know, now there's a few concerts happening, a few streaming concerts happening, but they're only asking the stars. They're not asking young people. They're only asking the stars to bring back the audiences. And we feel totally left out. And they're always asking the same people. And it was true. Yeah. It was like always the same people. And so I just got on the phone and called everyone that I knew, you know, um, and said, um, I want you to, when you get an engagement, I want you to bring a young artist yeah. onto the stage with you and give them a place. I want you to give them part of your fee. I want you to get the presenting organization to give them money, and I'll give you money. So you'll have, th Momentum will give you money. So you will have three, a threefold um, fee for the young artist. Put them, and what happened was, like, people really enjoyed doing that. Like, they realized, yeah, 70 minute recital, give 10 minutes, give 15 minutes to a younger artist. It's interesting for the audience, like, why does Natalie Desay want to bring this person on? Why does Patricia Kopachinskaya have this young cellist with her? Mm. What is it about that person that, that Patricia thinks is so special? So it's like, mm. it's, again, it's eliciting this kind of curiosity and leadership mm. and mentorship. Um, so for me, be because Equilibrium had been going for a couple of years and was working very well, I was bringing these artists together, we were doing these workshops, working with top sport people, working with um, having lots of guests coming in and then performing with Danish Radio, with Radio France, with Gothenburg Symphony, with Munich Philharmonic, you know, major orchestras. And then I thought, okay, Momentum is small, uh, equilibrium is, is on a small scale, but momentum can be really big because if an, I can engage 
70 of my colleagues to do the same thing that I'm doing, mm. you know, then, and then we expand from that. And it's a collective, and it's an artist-driven collective. Mm. It comes from the artists, it comes from us, mm. not from, there's, uh, it's not, uh, there's no management. <laughs> it's, it's us. Mm. And that is, for me, you know, of course I have, now I realize, okay, if I could do this, now I can do that. Mm. And once I do that, probably I can do this. Mm. And, and then all the other people involved also have the same mm. process of their, of their possibility. Because, you know, we keep having to come back to why are we, wa why are we making music? What is music for? Mm. And if you think back, if we, we, you, you were talking about Kierkegaard and, and you know, at the time of Schopenhauer and then Nietzsche, you know, music was replacing church for many people. Music mm. was replacing the spiritual. People were losing their belief in their, in their God, their spiritual God, many people. And music was taking the place of that. Mm. And wh whatever anyone's personal balance is, it is a healing force. We can't deny that. It is, does provide solace, and it does provide spiritual and human, um, it gives us strength, it gives us reflection, it helps us connect with other people. I mean, it has a very important function in our society, and we have to keep bringing it, and I think the artists are the ones, the musicians are the ones that can bring it back to that. It can't be a, it can't be a, a management that brings it back to that. It's the artists that have to bring mm. it and have to keep mm. reminding and keep insisting, like a child insists, this, it's this, this is it. It's such a great initiative, I must say, and I remember from my own musical life, uh, creating, uh, having this mad idea of devoting my whole life to percussion duo. Yeah, and uh, it was so difficult uh, to get foundation for getting on the road. I mean, you could get foundation for for studying abroad or mm. studying at other, but getting on the road, you yeah. know, which really educates you. Yeah, the performing, uh, like the performance uh, experience. And that's uh, it. it was difficult with yeah. one and a half ton gear and everything, oh. you know, as being uh, in, in the very beginning of your career, yeah. uh, and it was really difficult. So, uh, so this kind of help at that at that time, I think it's very essential. Um. In the, in the film Taking Risks, we have the title Taking Risks. There was also, I think, was Siad who mentioned this that he was really out of his comfort zone. And I just had this little crazy idea when I left home. Bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> to to try out you and me okay. taking a risk. Fine. Going out of our comfort zone. Okay and make a little improvisation. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because you mentioned um, in Cinema Ticket that you like to improvise. Yeah. You also said you're not that good at it or something, or, mm. uh, well, uh, or uh, you actually like it, yeah? I like it. And, I, uh, and this is totally unprepared, because <laughs> yeah, it ha really. such things <laughs> has to be unprepared. And um, before a little intermission, I just thought, because I brought some gear here, so I just took it out on my way from... Yeah, I my saw school. that. Yeah, yeah. I saw that. Right, yeah, yeah. You, you can't hide. I did notice that. And uh, we have not rehearsed anything. Uh, oh none of us. We don't know what we'll do for how long. Maybe uh, John Cates, uh, 4.33. Four, no, four minutes long? and 33 seconds. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's too long. I don't know. Yeah. But this is... Um, we got here a cajun. Yeah. And maybe we got something... And this, yeah, and then I guess we I better got stand you. up. <laughs> so what am I going to do? We don't know. Okay. Are you ready? Vic Firth. Yeah, Vic yeah, Firth. Yeah, great.
Thank you very much. Actually, you were really willing to take the risk. I was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I felt my heart rate starting, you know, going faster before asking the question <laughs> because it was kind of, you know, with the feeling of, am I really going to ask this now? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. You're what welcome. an experience. Yeah. A moment. Okay. Should we take a five-minute break? And uh, I'll receive questions from wherever uh, and uh, bring them on uh, to Barbara after the break. <laughs> and uh, uh, but just five minutes. Yeah, just five. We yeah. don't need long. Uh, we can just stretch our legs yeah, 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 or yeah, whatever. Just yeah. Shake it out. Okay. So yeah. thank you. Yeah. Thank you for first half. That was crazy. <laughs> I love that. What a good talk. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Really good talk. Really good. Mm. Yeah. Thank you, man.
Turn on again. Thank you very much. Check, check, check. Yeah, it's on. Great. Well, uh, probably I can't do all the questions in 25 minutes time, but Can we'll try. get around yeah. some of them. Yeah. Right. Um, you, uh, I'll just start with one thing: is that uh, a little bit about mental and physical health. And um, you mentioned on the stage there was a teacher. My running yeah. teacher. Yeah. Running teacher. Yeah. Yeah. And. Uh, are you familiar with uh, Haoki Murakami? Yeah. I haven't read. I know Murakami. Yeah, yeah Murakami has a great Japanese author, and he, and he wrote this book. What I talk about when I talk about running. Mm. I didn't read that. And uh, there are many great qu quotes in it. Yeah. One of them is that he says, um, "Pain is inevitable." How do you pronounce it? Inevitable. Invisible. Uh, no, inevitable. Uh, inevitable. In inevitable. Right. Inevitable. Pain is inevitable. Yes. Suffering is optional. Yes, <laughs> suffering is optional. <laughs> suffering yes. is optional, right? Yeah. Okay, so um, I'll try to, uh, and, and we may get back to this uh, running yeah. uh, book. Um, 
here's one question. Have you always been this driven and believed that you can do these things like equilibrium and conducting? Mm -hmm. Or is there doubt involved? Mm -hmm. And how do you deal with this? Ah, good question. Yeah, doubt. Yeah, doubt. Uh, yeah, of course there's doubt. Um, but I... Um, uh, have uh, if I'll deal with the first part of the question first. So have I always been driven? Yeah, pretty well. Um, it's not driven like it's it's just I've always been super high energy, and I I really like to do things, and um, it was always kind of part of me uh, wanting to going for personal best. I loved school, I loved learning, I loved studying, I loved, you know, that was just really part of me. And I don't, I mean, then as far as like these initiatives or what I'm doing or, or so on, I think in a way, like to look at the concept of failure, like, or risk taking or courage, like it's, these things are quite important to realize in oneself because Failure or, um, let's say, if I take a risk, there's a possibility that it doesn't, doesn't work. But that's okay, because that's not the point. The point is not, is not that. The point is that, right? So, mm -hmm. um, and it's, I, I do have doubt and I do have fear um, and I think those are actually part of being courageous, is to have fear and doubt and to continue despite those things existing. And to be I in a kind of, I mean, to acknowledge those things and to be in a partnership with those things. Like, I mean, even yesterday when I went up and sang, I was scared. Oof, like, you know. And <laughs> just now I was scared. But... <laughs> <laughs> but um, so I think the development of one's strength is important because you need the strength to be able to be courageous. You need, and you need to develop a support system around you that f works for you, whatever that system is of people, of uh, teachers, guide, people that guide you, mentors, friends, family, whatever it is. And... Um, but I think, I think the doubt, um, I deal with it in quite a particular way because, for example, if I have a piece and it's got a high C in it, the only thing I'm going to be working on on that high C is, is my intention and preparation for that high C. I will not doubt that I can't get the high C. I never allow my brain to say, what if I crack? Or what if I can't do it? Or what if I, I don't, I don't develop that brain path at all. I, uh, because if I develop that brain path and I walk over and over it until it becomes like a path in the woods that everybody, that, that exists, mm -hmm. then it exists. But if I don't develop that yeah. brain path, then yeah. I've yeah. eliminated I mean, I still may crack on the sea. Okay, whatever. But I it's, it's a conscious choice n never to entertain that dialogue. And about consciousness and subconsciousness, um, uh, I remember once when uh, uh, we, we decided to perform everything by heart. Mm, yeah. Yeah, uh, in the percussion. Group. And uh, once in a concert, uh, there was so suddenly a moment where I couldn't remember anything. Right, yeah. yeah. And I couldn't remember anything for about 30 seconds. Yeah. And it was a nightmare. Yeah. A true nightmare. I know. And yeah. I was seeking around and, uh, yeah. And then I found my way back. Yeah. But then came the fear for the next concert. Yes. When will this happen again? I know. Can it happen? You know, how can I go yeah. up against it? And uh, now I've cho chosen to make living of this, you know. <laughs> So therefore, I started studying uh, sports psychology mm. and how co uh, you can train your subconsciousness, you know, in your relaxations. Mm -hmm. And first thing is, as you say, if you, in your preparation for a concert, 
think about what can go wrong and imagine that then <laughs> then it's already you've half already real. created it you've yeah. already made it real uh, you already yeah. made it uh, yeah. half real yeah. so so that's uh, so and, and it turned out that you can actually really train your subconscious to to react in a more healthy way uh-huh. uh, one exercise i like to do and i don't know if uh, uh, but um, if you're familiar with that is to expand the expectations to yourself mm-hmm. because suddenly Usually your self-expectation will be between 70 and 90 percent. Mm. And if you go over in a performance 90 and 100 percent, that can be a little bit scary to you. Mm. And then you start reacting and then you are not in the moment. Right. right? Yeah, it freaks you out. And also the opposite way if you go below. Right. But if you're in the mental training, uh, meditate, get into a, a mood where you uh, imagine yourself performing 100 percent and staying calm with mm. that. Mm but also lower your expectations to yourself. So you imagine that something really goes wrong, but you actually get back yes. on the path. To visualize, yeah. well, never yeah. till over did that Does, does that make sense? To yeah. You? yeah, totally. Yeah. No, and, and she talks about it in one of her books about visualizing yourself having, uh, losing your breath or losing your, your line or whatever it is and recovering mm. from that yeah. under pressure. And that's very, uh, that she was the first person that I read who was talking about visualizing when things are not going well, which I found super helpful because mm. it's also, I mean, s- you can visualize yourself, you know, making all the jumps really well and so on. And, and but it's also important to, to be able to visualize how am I going to get out of this problem? Yeah, exactly. and I mean that's the sec- yeah, that's yeah. the most important. How it, that something goes wrong and you actually get in yeah. back in. Yeah. Yeah. And I think also about peak performance versus optimal performance. So peak is here and optimal is here. And so for me, Love Why You Man on Thursday, was it, I, I was going for a peak. I wanted a peak performance. And I, that's what I went for and, mm-hmm. and that's what happened. And I went for optimal the next day. And in fact, in my opinion, the, the Strauss was better than the first day. And Love Why You Man was optimal. But the Strauss was, was even mm. better than the first day. Mm-hmm. And, and that can also happen, mm. but without, in, without the intention. Also with the Strauss, you can't say, I'm going to make it better. It has to just... You perform a lot by heart. Yeah. And uh, have you ever experienced that oh suddenly? Yes. Yeah. And I can feel it coming. I can feel it coming because you're out there, and I know when my mind starts... Drifting. Well, it starts, dri- <laughs> it starts drifting too far ahead. Yeah. It starts thinking about what is the word in this next section, and and I, I'm like, don't, don't go there, don't go there. Just stay here and a little bit ahead. But if you go too far ahead, mm-hmm. and I I do that to myself sometimes. It's, uh, and I oh, when that happens, it's so scary. Very stressful. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but uh, and you but you have tried that you suddenly uh, on a shaky place and and you have to try to find your mm-hmm. way back. Yeah, and yeah. you have to find your way back and also to for ex- for example, if I'm singing Love Why Men and I, I forget the words, so I just kind of go and then I get back on track. I need to stay on the track. If I look back at yeah. while I'm performing to think what just happened? That was weird. And then I'll I'll <laughs> fall into something. So so to yeah. really look stay forward, in the yeah, yeah, to just okay mistake acknowledged, move on, mm. and come back to it later when I yeah. check the score. It brings us perfectly on to the next question, which says, do you have a routine for performance days or yes. a ritual to uh, help your focus? Yeah, um, I do. Um, I'm pretty protective on performance days um, because I don't want to have a lot of variables that are unknown to me, so I try to control the variables. So like, that has to do with what I'm going to eat, when I'm going to eat. Um, I always get to the concert hall very early. I, I travel like, you know, even things like, I travel with my own steamer because I've been on the road, your so steamer, steamer, to steam no, your uh, clothes. Right. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I've, I've had so many problems with either not having anything to to get your clothes prepared or um, 
uh, the iron that they give you has a, has a, it overheats and it burns your clothes and so mm. and like even stuff like that I, I w will control that I'll travel with my own Tupperware just in case the apartment I'm staying with doesn't have plastic containers that I can put the food in to bring to the work you know um, um, and then as far as the warm up goes you know uh, and this for singers I mean I'll probably talk more about this in the work in the in the master class this afternoon but. You know, I always do the same warm-up, and you can see on there's a video on YouTube of me that Mathieu made, um, where I'm basically warming up my voice, and then I'm singing Yukali in the film. And I do that warm-up every day. That's what I do every day. I do exactly the same warm-up every single day. So it, I'm a person of routine and habit, and I'm not going to test out something, especially in when I'm going for performance. You know, that's like Federer at Roland Garros saying, I think I'm going to try a new move. No, he's going to try a new move on a, on, on a match that is not important. He's not going to try it at Roland Garros, you know, so. So I, I'm quite strict and I make a real routine and schedule. I write it all out, I plan the day, and I don't have emotional telephone calls with my agent or whatever exactly. um, on yeah. the day of a show. <laughs> Do you have any physical uh, warm-ups like uh, qi gong? Yeah, yeah, sometimes I will do qi gong. Um, it depends. Like I won't run too much on the day of a show. Um, I like that I could bike to to the show because it got my body yeah. warm. Um, so yeah, there has to be something physical, stretching, of course, and. Physically, yeah. I found out two things I like to yeah. do before a concert. One thing was running, but short, but with intervals, uh -huh. because when the pulse has been very high, yeah, once, then it comes down quick. Then it's uh, not so uh, surprising or shocking the second time yes. in the concert. You That's know, right. Because then you are actually have been there. Yeah. Yeah. And also doing the five t Tibetanian exercise. Oh. Do you know them? Yeah, yeah. those are tough. Yeah. yeah, they're tough, but they're really good. Yeah, they're good. Yeah. yeah. Five so um, those. Um, let's see. Um, this is from Christina Bachelor, uh, Bachelor Three singer here at the Academy. I read that when you commissioned your piece, Let Me Tell You, by Hans Abrahamsen, you also worked with him on how to write for voice. So yeah. I'm, I'm wondering which elements you find the most important for a composer to consider when writing vocal music. Well, I think the first thing for a composer is that they have to be true to themselves. It's their authentic voice that has to be the most important thing. And if you're writing, let's say you're writing for a particular person. Let's say you're writing for me, I'm the muse for that particular piece. Um, I mean, when I, when I received the score for Let Me Tell You, I I thought I was looking at myself on the page. I couldn't believe it. Like Hans, we had spent four hours together in, in, in Berlin, and I had sung all kinds of different things for him, and it, it was like I kind of gave him a master class on my voice and on the voice and on the history of the, of the voice. But when that score arrived, it was just like everything that... It was beyond me, but I mean, it, I it wasn't like, oh, this is going to be easy. No, it was really tough. But he, so he was himself when he wrote that piece. He was his authentic self when he wrote that piece. And he understood what my capabilities were. And he, he pushed the boundaries, but he didn't exploit me. Mm -hmm. And this was super important to me because, of course, I've done a lot of pieces where you're basically exploited. The voice is exploited. It's quite you know, pyrotechnics and almost aggressive sometimes, and sometimes it is, it is aggressive on the voice, and I do sometimes take offense, especially after I sang the Ligeti, a lot of composers wrote pieces for me where it was clear they just wanted to have all the kind of, uh, they wanted the audience to react for their piece the way that audiences react for the Ligeti. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't really their personal truth. That's ego. That's something else. So I think there has to be a kind of a dialogue um, with the composer and the performer. And I, my boyfriend, he's not a, a musician, he's a filmmaker, and he, he always finds it really weird that when the piece arrives, when a piece arrives for me, 
and there's stuff that I'm really frustrated with, with one or this composer or that composer. And he said, well, why won't they just change it? And I said, <laughs> <laughs> most composers won't change it, you know? <laughs> and because it's done, because it's written. And he finds that very frustrating, um, and, and as do I. And what I've actually noticed is when I work with arrangers, like Bill Elliott, the guy that I do the, did the Gershwin arrangement with, or when I work with um, David Chalmain, who's an electronics guy, I mean, he'll change anything. We'll just change it on the spot. And we'll just make it work, and he mm. trusts me. And, and it's so interesting, because th our whole business is about trust and relationship, and yet d creating a dialogue is really interesting. And I mean, I'm, I'm, it's nothing to undermine the composers, but I do think that it would be healthy if you're working with someone who knows their instrument, who knows themselves, and, and who respects your, what you're trying to do, to really, to be, to have a little bit more flexibility in the classical composition world, I think would be very interesting. You can quote me on that. <laughs> 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 we have a few more questions. Yeah? Uh, so if, if you, right now, could go back in time, Yeah. We'll talk about that. And talk to yourself. As a music student, what would you tell yourself to focus on? What skills to grow and develop that have been central to creating your career? Well, you, you know... You'll probably get into that in the master class yeah, as well. Yeah, but, but I, would still, say yeah. I would say, actually, I was, I was super lucky because I, ha I, w I had really good teachers. And so I didn't have to go back and tell myself those things because they told me. You know, my singing teacher, Mary Morrison, my singing teacher, Neil Seymour, um, my tai, tai Chi teacher, the mentors that I had, I was really good at finding mentors. And so I got, I was able to get them to give me what I needed. And I think cultivating that in yourself is super important. To be able to find people that are on a higher level than you That, that can help you. And they want to help you. you just, but you've got to put yourself in the situation where you're present with them, where you can... And, we, and I'm still doing that. You know? I'm trying to surround myself with people that are all better than me you know, mm -hmm. so that I can keep trying to get to the next level. Um, and I think... I think the importance of nourishment in so many ways Like, not, it's not about the voice. <laughs> it's, it's about everything. It's about all the influences. If you don't have life experience, if you, it, then how can you sing that song anyway? I mean, it doesn't matter how great your technique is. You need to, to, to be reading. You need to be reading literature, philosophy. If, if you love poetry, read poetry. Going to art galleries, looking at nature, feeding, feeding, feeding the system and getting all your references, being in love, you know, <laughs> relationships, all that stuff, it's all gonna make you sing that song better. And it's not about the high C. Mm. It is, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a big question. So, uh, so the first question, uh, it's kind of twofold, but what do you think classical music and opera will look like in the future? Being an artist that I feel is driving the art from uh, form forward, have you experienced pushback from the classical community, or do you feel like there's a great need and interest to move forward? Um, so this is very much also about breaking traditions. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah, and uh, uh, I've, yeah, I've probably received some pushback, but that's fine. I don't really care. I mean that's, you're always going to have criticism and there's always going to be critics and there's always going to be people that don't agree and that's totally fine. <coughs> um, um, what was the first part of the question? What well do I see as the future? What do you think the classical music and opera will know. look like I in the future? Know. I mean, I think, I think this year has been a really interesting um, aquarium to look at, a fishbowl kind of year to look at what is classical music and What I've found really great is how fast things could move all of a sudden. Like classical music is super slow, 
right? And so it's been really great how quickly things could move. And um, I think also the idea that everything has to be this big, um, like that bigger is better, you know, these Bruckner symphonies and uh, big, 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 big. And actually it's been really amazing that a lot of repertoire, a lot of chamber music, a lot of, you know, the hierarchy of the size of the orchestra en ensemble, ha because it, we had to reduce it, um, that's been great because we've got to hear a lot of really interesting repertoire we might not have otherwise been looking at. Um, so I don't know what the future holds. I, I don't go so far in advance with that. When I, I don't really have time to think about that. So I don't spend a lot of time on it. I, you know, I know that like, I think things are changing. I think for, like the way my brain works is when I do Love Why You Men, now this is the first time I did it for an audience and now I think, oh, okay, so that means that, that, that this would, maybe I could do this now. And so that's how I'm kind of thinking is just exponentially, um, but I don't, I, I can't say that I know what the future holds for classical music. I, I hope that it's just, I mean, I, I, ho I think it's gonna be a lot of mix a lot of mix. I would say the fact is that we are actually all taking part in creating the future of the classical music. So it's yeah. we are part of the decision makers mm. in a way because we have to explore and create yeah. Yeah. with curiosity and courage. Yeah. Yeah. And then we c will define something which is not defined beforehand. Um, the last question from the audience or from a student. Uh, what are you looking for when singers audition for equilibrium? Uh, equilibrium? Um, what would be your advice to young singers seeking your mentorship? Well, um, what I'm looking for in the auditions, I always ask for a video, a curriculum vitae, and a personal letter. And I look at all those things. And I usually will look at videos that you didn't even send me. So clean up your YouTube, because <laughs> if, if somebody sends me a video, I'll usually Google them and find anything else that I can find. Like I spend a lot of time looking at people to see if I want to meet them in person. Um, and it, it, I think it really is important to make sure that there isn't stuff out there of you on the internet that you don't want people to see. Because remember, YouTube is, is the casting. I mean, YouTube is an audition now. And a lot of casting directors, I kid you not, casting directors for opera companies, they cast by looking at YouTube. So, and they're not gonna check, oh, but this was in 2011 and this one's 2017. They're not gonna, they're, they're just gonna go, viz, 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 viz. nope, 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 yes, yes. It's like Tinder, you know, it's like really. But now you really scares me because if I had to clean up my YouTube, oh, what a nightmare. No. I know, <laughs> me too. I'm like, and now, you know, now everything is streamed and everything is, is recorded and shown. But there is, you know, for young singers, there, I think one can have a bit of control because, mm -hmm. and, and um, I'm looking for, um, I'm looking for people that are, I, I mean, I am looking for really good technique and really good um, disciplined musicianship. Um, so there has to be a level of singing already that I think is, is up there. I'm looking for people that are curious and um, kind of open-minded, like a little free, some, some kind of freestyle in there about the person. Um, because I think the people that are traditional um, will be able to get lots of help because there's so many different traditional programs. And I think what I have to offer is that I didn't take that normal path. I mean, now I reached a level and where I have these colleagues now that, I mean, well, let me put it this way, like, I, I, usually, I often go and teach at Juilliard in New York, and I always say to them, you know, first of all, I never would have gotten into Juilliard if I auditioned. And I bet if I auditioned today, I still wouldn't get in. <laughs> I'm not Juilliard material, right? And I think that's great that Juilliard invites me to come every year and teach them, teach their students, because it's, 
it's, it's smart of them to have someone like me come because I didn't follow that path. I didn't get, learn my arias and my roles and then go and do a young artist program and then tick, 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 tick. That didn't, that's not how it happened yeah. for me. And so it's, I think it's, it, it can be inspiring to, to see that there is no one particular way. Um, so we have to look back in Fra Frank Sinatra, my way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would like to uh, end this, uh, I wound up this uh, session uh, with uh, Murakami. Uh, when I, uh, what I talk about when I talk about running, and this is much more about than running, I'll just give a few quotes yeah. from the book. Uh, he says, when I'm criticized unjustly, from my viewpoint at least, or when someone I'm sure will understand me doesn't, I go running for a little longer than usual. Mm. And then uh, he said here, at any rate, this is, that's how I started running. 33, that's how old I was then. Still young enough, though no longer a young man. The age that Jesus Christ died, the age that Scott Fitzgerald started to go downhill, that age may be a kind of a crossroad in life. Mm. That was the age when I began my life as a runner, and it was my belated but real starting point as a novelist. Wow. Uh -huh. Now, I know um, that you uh, buy second-hand clothes, mm -hmm. right? This is a second-hand book <laughs> from me to you. Thanks, Uffe. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very so much, much for a great time. Wow. Thank you. <laughs>
gang i det. Ja, nu skal vi faktisk bare lade de der 
Det synes jeg ikke, at du skal sige det her. Og så vil jeg gerne sige, at du har siddet med noget som og yes. det er hendes ja. Det er hendes ja. Det kan godt være, at de ikke har en masse ting, men det kan vi lige have en masse ting. Ved du hvad, Jens? Det her, det tror jeg, at vi gør med en opkommelse. Ja. Så må Thank you. 
Mundbind, der passer til din skurke. Ja, det er jo bare at se mig og kalde det flytte ind, men det er der, der er en Og det er lidt flot nok. Det skal ikke.
to newcomers and um, very welcome to you again, Barbara. We just had a wonderful artist talk. Yeah. And uh, I'll give you this book for Carmen. So yeah. I'll talk about when I talk about running. Uh, but I also have a little other gift as a start off of this. Yeah. <coughs> this one. Thanks. Right. <laughs> and uh, <coughs> mouth mask. And uh, it says unmute. Unmute. Yeah. So that's part of our new mutation strategy because we had all these uh, Zoom meetings where we oh always, yeah. uh, someone started talking oh yeah. and you couldn't hear what they were saying and we said unmute, right? Yeah, yeah. And this is a very simple thing. We have to unmute ourselves, yeah. unmute our potential, yeah. unmute classical music to be heard in the wor world. So here you go. Mark. Thanks, Jose. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so and, uh, I will leave the stage to you. Okay. Uh, you know what to do. I know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really excited to, uh, to do some work now um, and to hear uh, my younger colleagues. Um, I'll just say um, each of you have, have prepared two pieces and each of you have about half an hour. We don't need to take a big break in the middle. I'm not really a big break taker, so we could, I think we had planned. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, so I think if we take like a 10-minute break or whatever. The, the, the thing that I really like is when people ask questions during the process. So I might, in, in, you know, when I'm working with someone, um, if there's a question that relates to what they're doing, I hope that the singers who are singing don't mind if we, if we have questions during that time. Just raise your hand and, and uh, I'll come to you for that. And, um, because I like to keep things really in a dialogue and flow. So I don't want to save all the questions for the end, OK? Um, and each of you prepared two pieces. With this, let's say we each have about half an hour, uh, 40 minutes. I'll probably hear both pieces. Um, and, but if, if I really end up digging into one thing, I might just fixate on that for the whole time if I think that's going to be super helpful for all of us. So um, let's, let's get started. Jakob. Yeah, hi. <laughs> hey. Yeah, you too. So, what do you want to start with? I think I'll start with Stravinsky. Great. Um, I'm going to go back there uh, with my fancy mask, or I don't know if I have to wear my mask. But I'm going to go back there because I want to just, I don't want to look at your profile. I want to hear you from, from there. So, that's good. Do, 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 do. Here I stand My constitution sound I pray not ill favored My wit ready My heart light I claim to be not to suppress In a copy book I submit to the drudge joke I slave to a lifetime To an age of others And then be thrown away like a no tone not I have not framed numbers as sure as that whose works are for men or ever predestined soul. In my fashion, I may profess myself of their party and herewith entrust myself to fortune. Should I labor? 
Excellent. So um, just to set the scene, this is at the beginning of the Rake's Progress, and um, Tom is basically telling us who he is, mm. right? Mm -hmm. And so give us a couple words that describe Tom. Like, what kind of person is he? Just a few simple uh, things. He's naive in a way, and he's very, um, he's young, and he is, um, he, he's really into this fortune thing. That he he's into he the fortune thing, yeah. yeah. He thinks that he can, he can do whatever he wants, or whatever he believes he can do. So, do you think he's selfish? Yeah, in a way, um, but it's, uh, it's like this youthful joke. Yeah, and you think he's lazy? Yeah, in a way. Yeah, me too. I think he, he has all those, those qualities. He, he, he's one of those people that doesn't want to do all the work. He, he just wants everything to come easy. Yeah. Right, so that's, that's, and it's, it's interesting because he has such difficult music to sing. <laughs> so it's fun. And he's always escaping from rhythm. He, you can't pin him down because he escapes from the rhythm. Um, beautiful singing, wonderful voice, fantastic placement. There's two, th there's two things right off the bat that I want to think about. Can you tell me a bit about uh, your breathing? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I try to breathe like deep. Super low? Yeah. Okay. And control it from there. Okay. And also to have a, an idea about my rib cage and that feeling like out. Okay. Yeah. So the rib cage is expanded, is allowed to be expanded, mm -hmm. and the lower part. So you're trying to get pelvic floor kind yeah, of. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Super. Wonderful. Because um, I couldn't tell, so I was no, I was like no, trying no. to zone in. I was trying to see what was doing there. Um, I would like the end of phrases, even from the very first phrase, mm -hmm. here I stand, yeah. that the end of the phrase becomes an explosion. Yeah. And this also has to do, because you're singing in English, with voiced versus unvoiced consonants. Mm -hmm. So stand is a d, a voiced consonant. I want to hear it on the pitch. Yeah. A lot of your final consonants, especially the Ds, you're doing as a T, okay. and you're singing it as an unvoiced consonant, and you're not pitching it. Yeah. So if you said, here I stand, here I stand, uh, and I want to actually hear the stand, uh, that I hear a vowel after okay. the consonant yeah. on the pitch. Yeah. So let's, I'm going to, with every end of words or end of phrase, I want to hear that. So yeah. let's, I'm going to let you sing a little bit. Here I stand. Yeah, even more. And then when you, good, and then when you, explode off of it, yeah. the d, the explosion of the d will be the catalyst for the breath to come in. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to breathe after that. Okay. It will have happened. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Here I stand, my constitution sound, my frame not ill-favored, my rib ready, my heart light. Good, good. Just to get super picky, because you're on such a high level already. Uh, I think that there's some holding going on. There's a little holding. And I would like if the breath really goes splat. Okay. So here I stand. It's not that your body has to go splat, right. but that the release is each time you, f you explode and everything is gone. Here I stand, my constitution sound. My frame not ill-favored. Ill so that you spend everything. Okay. Otherwise, I see build up, build up, build up. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I know what I mean. Okay. Yeah. Here I stand. My constitution sound. Release. My frame not ill-favored. Let it go. My wit ready, my heart light. Good. How did that feel? Did you notice a difference? Uh, yeah, at least in the breathing. Yes. Um, I think you can let go even more. Yeah. And th now the, la the next thing, because we're coming to my heart, like give a kick off of that. My heart, rhythmically. Yeah. Okay. I feel like you, what is it, a G? Uh, a G. G? Yeah. Um, I, it feels like if I was conducting you with orchestra, it mm -hmm. feels like you hold the G lo just a little bit too long. Okay. You've got to lead the kickoff and be super in the rhythm of it. Okay, one more time. 
Release, release, release. Yet I stand, my constitution sound, my brave not ill favored, my wit ready, my heart light. I play the industrious apprentice yes, in a coffee book. Yes, and be super strict yeah. with the rhythm. I play the industrious apprentice in a coffee book. And use the rhythm yeah. to describe how menial this task is. I play the industrious apprentice in a coffee book. Yeah. I submit to the drudge's yoke. I slave for a lifetime. To so use the rhythm with your disdain. Yeah. So the rhythm, the expression of the rhythm is the dramaturgy. Yeah, I get it. Okay? Yeah. I play. I play the industrious apprentice in a coffee book. I submit to the drudge's yoke. I slave to a lifetime to knowledge others. And then we thrown away like a note phone. Not I. Okay, let's do it one more time. Can you give me a little less sound? Yeah. I know you can sing this upside down and backwards. So uh, just back off on the sound, okay. on the volume of sound yeah. a little bit so that I get more line. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, uh, uh, nod de bone, nod, nod de bone, nod de bone. Okay. Nod de bone. Mm -hmm. Like in Italian. Like in, oh yeah, and since we're on that, since you say that, when I asked him for the release of the, the voiced consonant, there's a fantastic book. Somebody write it down and then give it to the rest of your colleagues. It's called um, A Singer's Guide to English Diction, and it's by Catherine Labouf, L-A-B-O-U-F-F. -F. She's amazing. When, the first time I did Rugs Progress, I got to work with her, and she, she's the coach for Renee Fleming and for the Met and for New York, New York City Opera, and, which doesn't exist anymore, but for, for, uh, for many English language productions. And the thing that she did was she turned English into Italian. So sh the way that she pronounces it is she adds the schwa vowel, right? The, the schwa is the um, unstressed aspect of a word uh, in between many words. So I play the industrious apprentice in a copy book. I submit to the drudge's dr yoke. Uh, yoke. I slave for a life of time to enrich others. So when you speak English, it becomes like Italian. <laughs> and then we have all these extra schwa vowels afterwards, which make the words very easy to understand and keeps it in a legato. Yeah? <laughs> it's a super technique. And so if you think of adding all those extra schwas, um, not all of them today, but <laughs> when you come back to the part, when you come back to the part, start writing it in. Like even a word like play becomes play. Flowers becomes flowers, flowers. So you're adding vowels. You're singing more and more and more on vowels. Okay? Yep. Let's go from the I play. <laughs> I play the industrious apprentice in a coffee book. I submit to the drudge joke. I slave through a lifetime to narrate others and then be thrown away like a nod bone. Not I have not framed doctors. I showed us that good works are no avail for heaven predestined all. In my fashion, I may profess myself of their party. And herewith entrust myself to fortune. Okay, now, now I'm going to go to the next level, yeah. which is each time you say I, mm. and then you say the thing, can you tell me the story that you didn't plan this song? Okay. okay? You, you have no idea what you're going to say next. So, I, seriously? Me? That? Do that? Or this? Seriously? You want me to do this? What? That? Oh, that is so beyond me. I'm going to... And trust myself to forge. Mm. So let it happen to you. So you know this inside out. Now you have to trick yourself that you don't know it. Mm. And you're going to, it, it's going to be like the improvisation that Ufa and I did this morning, <laughs> that you really don't know what's going to happen. Yeah? You don't know what you're going to say next. And that's going to change your body. Yeah. Okay. Same place? Yeah. yeah. I played the imposter's apprentice in a coffee book. Huh? What? I slave to a lifetime to narrate others. And what? And then be thrown away like a note. Uh-uh. 
Not I have not great doctors. I should have that good works on the page. Why? Okay, good, good, good. The first three were great, yeah. okay? Have not great doctors, should have, um, for heaven predestines all. This is a chance to get super romantic in that line. So have not grave doctors, should have, for heaven predestines all. You can do a special there. Let it get super legato so that we have a big contrast again on in my fashion, yeah. in my fashion, I'm gonna do things my way. I'm not gonna get a job. I'm not gonna earn money. I'm not gonna have savings, right? So then we get a totally different color there. Yeah. So we've done the three I, I, I. Let's then be thrown a nade like an oddball, not I. Have not grave doctors. Let's yeah. go from there. Improvise, improvise, improvise. Uh, have not grave doctors. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Have not grave doctors. I should have that good works of no avail. For heaven, bring us in soul. In my fashion, I may profess myself of their party. And? And herewith entrust myself to fortune. Yes. Since it is not my man. Okay, great. So, yeah. big difference for me. I think it's really excellent. Now, now you come to the song. And I think the song, Since It, is a song that you know. I think this is your Tom's song that he sings all the time. So this is like, you know what I mean? It's like really, the whole first part has the air of improvisation and freedom, and then you sing your song. This is my theme song, right? So let's do, um, and herewith, and here with. very yeah. good, yeah. And herewith entrust myself to fortune. Since it is not my man, it we rise or we fall. But the favor of fortune that governs us all, that governs us all. Okay, good. Can you do it even more nonchalant? Like, you've sung this a million times. Since it is not okay. by merit. It's like, okay. I know this song, and this is what the words are. And we rise with it, da da So you don't have to get into the, don't teach us what the meaning no, of it okay. is. Let us come to you. Yep. Let's go okay. right from there. Since it. Since, Since it is not my man, it we rise or we fall. But the favor of fortune that governs us all, that governs us all. Why should I labor for what? So, dramaturgically, I'll just give you some tools of how I think one could approach this. The whole since it is not by merit, we rise or we fall, that governs us all, that's your song. Yeah. Okay. And then you start telling us why. Okay. Yeah. So then it, then it gets personal. So this, that the song is for yourself, and then you start saying, oh, and it's because of this and this and this. Just so you understand, you know, just so you know what I'm all about, because I'm Tom. You know, and you're going to see me for the next two hours and 40 minutes, right? <laughs> so let's, let's do it again from the since it is not, not by merit. Yep. So the theme song, and then you think of the next line. Yep. Then you think of the next line. And this. Oh, and you probably should know that, too. Okay. Yeah. You okay. see what I mean? Since it is not by merit, we rise or we fall. Love if you, let, let's say he wants to do this for an audition. 
which is a great audition piece, mm. right? Because it's not too long, it shows a lot of different aspects of the sound. My feeling about staging, and like I, I think you should move within you yeah. know, a circle of this mm -hmm. amount of space mm -hmm. for, for a performance or an audition, doesn't matter. But let's get away from performance yeah. and let's go into something more filmic. Mm. And that, I mean, often with singers I say, yeah, touch your head sometimes or touch your hair or, or turn away or look, like stuff that makes us want to look at you, but that you're not selling it to yeah. us all the time. Yeah. You see what I mean? So sometimes you're going to say, well, but if she be not, then what, what wealth could I gain if we're talking about it? Well, toil, would it last be in vain? Oh, you're there. Yes, I forgot. And then, you know, that kind of interplay. Mm -hmm. And it, I think it can be helped, actually, by a lot of doing stuff in front of a mirror. Yeah. You know, like just staring at yourself all the time and say, this works, this works, like this kind of filmic um, mm. So let's go. Um, <coughs> why should I labor? Yes. Yeah. Why yeah. should I labor? Let's go from there. So sometimes it's really for yourself. You can even turn to the side. Get a, don't even sing it to us. Like really, take take some real risks in there that you're not you're not. Yeah. Because this this separates you. Thi to, to do something like this puts you on a whole new level. Mm. If you do this, you're a, a wonderful young singer. But if you do this, <coughs> you're going into the realm. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, like, go up to that level. Yeah. I'll try. Okay. Why should I labor for what in the end she will give me for nothing? stuff way better, so much more interesting. Um, he, and as the aria goes on, Tom, basically, I think he, he really revs himself up. Like, this is like the ultimate pep talk, right? Yeah. self pep, yeah, yeah. yeah? And so let him, let him, he says, come wishes, be horses. Like, this, yeah. the guy's like, he's ready to take off. Mm. So let him, let that energy build up in him he doesn't know what to do with it anymore. You know, what he could do is get a job and work, but. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so let's, let's let that build, and I want to do two technical things. Mm -hmm. My life lies before me. Not, don't go too wide on yeah. life. Nope. Keep it, because you've got up to go. Mm -hmm. So keep it my, like, life. life lies before me. The world is so wide. Not wide, mm -hmm. wide, come wishes, be mm -hmm. horses. So you're already doing this. I'm just, but I want a little more. Yeah. This beggar shall. Now on the word shall, I would say get super narrow okay. so that you open on ride. Yeah. If you bring shall too wide, this beggar shall ride. You're already too, you've brought too much weight up. This beggar shall ride. You see what I mean? Then you open it on ride, but not on shall. Mm. So keep shall narrow. Yep. And then this beggar shall ride <laughs> and develop the ride. And were you here this morning? Uh, no, I'm Okay, so I want you to stretch the sound this way. Yeah. Okay? So not there. <sighs> okay, so let's yeah. go. Where, where should we go from? Uh, my, uh, no, I want to do a little more build up. Mm. 
if but if she be not yeah okay yeah, yeah. while she be but if she be Because it's too generic. Okay. This this is too yeah. generic. Okay. And when you go into an audition, you want to show them that you can move differently. Mm -hmm. So so don't forget about this. <sighs> Let it be okay. even the leg or side, you know that the the, the, yeah. the body just because he's got to be woo like yeah. Where am I going here? Oh no, I'm going there. And the direction, um, the director that we had in um, in uh, you was Linus Feldblum, and Linus, he, he, he said, you know, Tom's like a puppy. Mm. He's like a, a dog, and then it sees this, and then, oh, oh, it sees that, oh, I know I like this. And so the, the change of direction with Tom, he has a very short attention span. So he's interested by everything. So let him keep switching. Don't get stuck in a gesture. Already while you're in this, you should be already on to the next one. Okay, okay? same place one more time. you two questions. How does it physically feel when I make you do? Yeah. 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 And much more believable. Yeah. Um, do you, the high note. How yeah. did that feel? Better. And what yeah. did you do? I just went one octave or something. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And uh, one thing for the final note. This beggar shall ride. Or um, can you sing the? Final D on the pitch and put the schwa vowel on the pitch after. Okay. Don't, because you sang it lower. Okay. And, but keep it on the pitch because then you add more airtime to that yeah. note. Do you want to sing? We have 10 minutes. Do you want to sing the Mozart? Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Gear change. <laughs> yeah, gear change. <laughs> Thank you. 
really good. That's really tough, Aria. Oh my God. And I'm, I'm, I wanted you to do it, even if we don't have time really to work on it, I wanted you to do it because I wanted to see if you could. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, after everything that we'd worked on. Um, if you could tell me two things that you thought you did really well in this and two things that, and then we can compare, okay? And two things that you think you can improve in this area. And I should start with the... Doesn't matter. Okay. I could improve um, the coloratures, I think, um, the air flow in okay. the instrument. Um, and then I could improve the high A. Okay. Which is kind of, yeah. Not your best uh, ever. Yeah. Uh, and I did, um, I did well because I came through. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, for sure. Uh, and I didn't die. At the no, end, so that's you made it. Kind of nice. Believe me, I've been on stage with people who did die. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Night it's after long, night. Long one. Um, yeah. yeah. And um, I think I think um, a lot of the when you have just one note uh, lying there went quite well. Yeah, it did go well. Yeah. Okay, I'll tell you my two things. Uh, my, f my first of all, chapeau that you did it, because mm. y uh, you did it under pressure and you succeeded, mm. and it was very, very well placed. Um, I, and the sec second thing I really liked is I felt your body was engaged in a different way mm. than when you started with Tom. I thought, yeah. I thought the engagement of the body was quite galvanized, quite yeah. concentrated in a really good way. Yeah. Um, what I would be interested in would be a much bigger dynamic variation. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah, because this for me was between a mezzo forte and a forte for almost the whole piece. Mm. There was only one note, the vado, was it vado, vedo, vado? That was the only one where you kind of, and I would love to hear your mezza di voce. Mm. I would love to hear if you give me a note like this, and I would love to hear what is it when he does a sotto voce, mm. or when he covers a bit. Yeah. Um, so for me, it would be, I would love to see a lot more risk taking in the dynamic variation. So now you know you can sing it after 30 minutes of working on Tom Rakewell. Mm -hmm. We have to stop, but the takeaways for that are, I think, let's, you know your voice is so well placed on the resonance, it's absolutely on. So now sometimes take more risks with mm -hmm. your dynamics. Yeah because that's gonna set you apart. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have a quick question before we go on to Sophie? One, one question from the general public about anything? No question? Yes? You have one. No? Yes? Um, how do you get into the mood of a song or like an aria that you're practicing like after you walk on stage? Like how yes. Do yeah, how do you get into the zone? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, I think you could probably already be in the zone of the song as you come on stage. Secondly, what I find as a singer, because you know, I, I used to get so nervous, and what I found helped me more than anything was to, l to listen to what was being played. So to not go into what I'm going to do, but to be really in partnership with what is already happening on stage. Um, I did this a lot with Reinbert. Like if you look at my scores of my recitals with Reinbert, I just wrote in my score all the time, listen to Reinbert, listen to Reinbert, listen to Reinbert. Um, there will be a point for many of you that and it, it's not maybe right now, but I think it, it hits people in their 20s, sometimes in their 30s, when s they're finally, you're in music all the time, and you're, you're just in it all the time. And that it's like the door opened, and you're like, whoa, how did, why didn't I get through that door before? And then you're always in. So that will happen after your 10,000 hours, basically. So until that, um, Listen, 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 super deeply. 
And I think also having kind of trigger words for yourself, like if you get distracted by your nerves and you think about, you think about other things and you know that's probably gonna happen, if you've already planned trigger words for yourself, like whether it's, um, if you were singing Tom, whether the word is um, improvise or unlock the knee or um, bugle mouth or like technical things that are gonna bring you into a kind of focus zone. So, and, and really I believe very strongly in writing things into your score. Like don't think you're gonna remember stuff. You're not, <laughs> especially under pressure. Write it all down and write, in, write it in. There's a wonderful um, video of the Belgian, I think she was a Belgian tennis player, Justine Hennet. And when they would do the changeovers in tennis matches and she would sit down into her chair and there's one video of her where she takes an envelope out and she, it's a, a letter she wrote to herself and she opens it up and it says, run, run, run. So she, here is this tennis player on the highest level on the changeover opening an envelope to remind herself to run. Well, who would think she would need to remind herself to run? But she knew she was gonna need that. So that's what I mean, that kind of, you know, um, helping yourself because under pressure, it's very hard to remember all the things that you said you were gonna do. Sophie, Sophie, Sophie. Hey, did you? Okay, sure. Messiaen, fantastic, Dunduchi. I'm gonna go, um, I'm gonna go sit down in my little spot. So, do you want to just tell us a tiny thing about Haravi? Yes. So, this is a song title of 12 songs written by Olivier Messiaen. Uh, it's a song title that uh, he did while his wife was uh, uh, beginning to get quite ill. Um, it's a celebration of love and death. It's um, inspired over the, uh, from Tristan uh, and Isolde, the Liebes Tod. And also it is, uh, so his text is his own, but it is mixed with Peruvian kind of tribal um, expressions that he uses not for their specific meaning, but more for their emphasis and their musicality in, yeah. And uh, this is the fall song, and this is kind of uh, the more physical meeting between the two, it's a dance. You'll notice uh, that I repeat something quite a few times. Uh, that is supposed to be the sound of uh, Perucha, which is who is Isolde, uh, of her uh, ankle chain beating into the, uh, the ground while she dances. Mm. Do do chi. Do do chi. 
say what you're wearing is fantastic for this piece and I think it really makes a difference to dress for the music um, for what you're singing whether you're, you're in a master class or whether you're in a concert and I don't know did you choose this because you thought it suited the piece really well well yes and also because it's a setting where it's kind of a concert but also it's a working space yeah so I don't want to be in a gown yeah but this, like, for me, th this, because it evokes something kind of mythical. Right. And, it, so it's, and it's so interesting to me because, like, in my career, I, I, I would choose uh, dresses when I do concerts. I would choose concert dresses for a particular piece of music, and I would always wear that dress for that piece of music. So, and, and I think it is something to think about what we wear, like, and, and how it matches the music, because we are the vessel of that. So it, it really struck me, so I wanted to say something about it. The next thing I wanted to say, before I get to your singing, which was fantastic, so I'll get that out of the way already. Um, now, when his wife was getting, I, I'm also studying some Messina right now. Yeah. And um, so when his wife was getting ill, and you told us that, and I found that really important that she said that. And there are some, and the reason I felt it's important is because composers are writing their souls on the page. And Messiaen was extremely religious. Um, in, in fact, this wife that um, became ill, um, he had to put her in a, a sanatorium, kind of a mental institution. and. And he was in love then, he fell in love with Yvonne Loriot, uh, but he couldn't be with Yvonne Loriot because his wife was still alive and he was a very, very strict Catholic. And there is, all of this influences the music. It really has to do with it. Yeah. It's not that he went into the office and composed and then came back to his life. It's all one thing all the time. And I think, for example, a piece like the Schoenberg String Quartet, number two, where um, Schoenberg's wife was ha ha had an affair with Richard Gerstel, the painter, and left Schoenberg. And that was the point that Schoenberg left harmony. I think there's a correlation. And so I, I think it's, I, I appreciate that you said that. Um, so, the dun dun chi, yeah. first of all, because it's a C sharp, so tell me how you decided to approach it the way you decided to approach it. Because it's just a re it's one repeated note. Mm -hmm. But you departed from that a bit. Tell I me. Did, yeah. yeah, tell me. Um, I, I did so because I really love the rawness of his music. Yeah. I love that it seeks out in all the corners of the, of the human voice and what it can do. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted to use my speaking mm -hmm. voice, yeah. chest voice, yeah. because um, I think it has something interesting, also a little bit erotic. Yeah, big yeah. time. Yeah. Um, so that's why I, I believe because it fits. Well, because you have the yeah. C, and and but the way that you did it, you uh, C sharp. You sing it, you sing it on C sharp, but then you you start getting higher. Yeah. 
And my gut is telling me that you, now that you've done it this way, yeah. you can bring it back to the C sharp. Right. And the tension is you want to go higher, yeah. but you can't. Okay. You have to stay on that note, repeating that note. And the next thing I want to say about the Dun Dun Chi, the open, whole opening section is, don't sing it to us. Yeah. It happens to you. Yeah. It happens to you, it overcomes you. It's like when you go into a Zen monastery and the, the, the incense is there and you, you, you just take the air and you wash the air over you. Mm -hmm. So let yourself be bathed in the repetition of that. Yeah. And every time you repeat it, it goes deeper and deeper and deeper into the psyche. Okay, yeah. so I'm gonna make her sing the whole opening again. I want you to confine yourself yeah. to the C sharp. So all the tension and all the effort to leave that note and to explode, explode out of it, mm. will you have to galvanize, mm. okay? And forget that we're there. It's a tr you are bringing yourself into trance state, okay? All right. Okay. stop you for one second. I'm going to stop you for one second. It's hard. Yeah, it is hard. Yeah. yeah. You know when you see forward but you don't see anything? Yeah. Go into that state yeah. with your eyes yeah. so that it's, you, don't, you don't see anybody. Okay. Other thing is, I think when you stand on one foot, it makes it too casual. <laughs> when you, so it's, it's simply, and feel, like, you know when you do like a body scan meditation, mm -hmm. when you have, you feel your feet, and then you feel your ankles, and then you feel the calf, and then you feel the knee, mm. and then you feel just above the knee. Why don't you do it as a body scan, all right. and start with the soles of your feet. Yeah. And all you're gonna think about is just working up the body. Mm. And the last time when you get the dun dun chi, dun dun chi, dun, then you've gotten to here, and then you're ready to sing. So start with the feet. So all you're thinking about is feet, and start working up each, each one. you went up yeah. but the whole for me like this then I, I felt palpable yeah. focus I was like whoa she's getting into the trance yeah. you're evoking the goddess or whatever it is <laughs> right you're evoke you're yeah. you're awakening the whatever it is yeah. the chi actually <laughs> <laughs> so ha tell me how that felt could you stay in it I it will I went I sort of went in and out. I, I really wanted to stay. In yeah. It. But then uh, the the danger of thinking uh, I don't know is it too much? Is it too oh. much? is it too little? Is the mosquitoes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Those those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All those extra thoughts. Yeah. I think what would be really cool. So we'll we'll leave that section of the, the piece. We'll go to the next okay. section. I think would be really cool. Mm -hmm is for every single line, if, if this works for you, this body scan, yeah. you put soles of the feet, then the next one, ankle, yeah. then the next upper ankle, yeah. then the next calf, then the next knee, and plan it all and memorize it. Yeah. So you know exactly where you are gonna be. Mm. 
leading it so that it's totally planned and you can only think about those things. Yeah. All right, I want to go now to the part where we're going to sing the Piruchka, Pirucha. <laughs> I think the hands don't need to be into it. Yeah. This this won't mean anything. No. Lead from the sternum. Yeah. Lead from the sternum, unlock the knees, unlock the hip, and now be the intervals and the rhythms in this music. Just be the intervals and the rhythms. Pronounce the right word at the right time with the right rhythm, and that's the complete expression. You don't need to do anything else. All right. <laughs> feedback for that because I saw a big difference. Anybody? Someone say what what is the difference from your perspective? A friend of hers, somebody say. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. It's like concentration and energy. Yeah. Super center. It it's like night and day. Yeah, okay. When you try to tell us a story on this, yeah. It, it, it's, it's not necessary. Yeah. It's so not necessary. And there is some music like that where you simply have to be the rhythm and the sound. Yeah. You are a percussion instrument. Sometimes I think of my body like there's some pieces, you know those tubular bells that percussionists play with the hammers? You know, ding, dong, ding, dong. I, sometimes I think of that like in yeah. certain pieces. And this could be like a piece like that where you're just, you're actually being hammered yeah. and the body is emitting the sound. And that's also why I say lead from sternum, yeah. because this, mm, mm, this strength right here, so the gut is super low, the breath is super low, the knees are unlocked, but this is, okay? I want, I want you to, um, yeah, I want you to sing all of this again, yeah. center it, and then we're gonna go on to the next middle section, because I have yeah. a few notes about that. Yeah. So just, I just want you to concentrate on that. Stand and deliver, right. be the instrument. So did yeah. you feel that you were able to do what I asked you to do? Almost. Okay. Yeah. Did you come in and out of it, or did you stay in? Yeah. Percentage. Well, in the body, I stayed, but in the mind, I, I came in and out. Okay. Not on purpose. Uh -huh. And when the mind comes in and out, where does it go? Um, places where it shouldn't. Okay, but yeah. like all of us, right? That's normal, right? Yeah. So we're constantly, we, con we want to bring the attention back. Are we concentrating on what we want to be concentrating on? And this is a challenge for all of us at all times, right? Do we put our attention on the things that we want to put our attention on? And when, we, when our attention goes away from that, can we bring the attention back? Yeah. So like one exercise for that, actually it's kind of interesting, is if you, had, if you were singing this mm -hmm. and you had two cards in your hand, and you can do this in the practice room. Yeah. You have a red card and a blue card, okay? And Am I, I want to concentrate on, I want to focus my attention on rhythm and sound, so blue card. And as soon as your mind goes to the other place, the red card comes up. And as soon as you bring the attention back, the blue card comes up. So you can practice this with yeah. yourself. We don't yeah. have to do it here. But you can practice this with yourself, literally like, and you'll be like going like this all the time. And yeah. I guarantee you everybody in the room will be going like that, right? We're, that's, because, that's what we're like. But can you bring the attention back? Yeah to the blue card. Can you bring the attention back to what you want to be focusing on? Yeah. 
and these mosquitoes, and I talk about the mosquitoes, you know, if you saw that Taking Risks film, there's this, uh, this sports coach that I work with a lot, and, and I work with a lot of uh, athletes and Olympic people, and it's about mental discipline and focus, and are we focusing on what we wanna be focusing on? Because that really, and when we lose the focus, can we bring it back? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so, I, because I thought you did really well, by the way, <laughs> I, but I did see a flicker, yeah. and I was like, oh, where's she going? Okay. <laughs> Now, I'd like to now go to the legato section, and yeah. in this legato section, I think, because he says berceur, he does this, he writes that sometimes mm -hmm. in other pieces as well. So it's like a lullaby, yeah. and I think it can be even more legato. Yeah. It can be like, so that we, we don't even, I mean, the rhythm, so we've been in, we've been in vertical rhythm, yeah. and now we're gonna come into this horizontal, kind of diagonal world yeah. for a while. Mm. So let's go from the four bars before mm. Tungu, yeah. okay? Yeah. <laughs> buy sausages and they they have the space in between mm -hmm. so I what I'm hearing is a little bit of sausaging yeah. between the notes mm -hmm. so if you do a little bit of crescendo at the end of each note before right. you go to the next one then we won't have any more sausages and it'll become like this like you know what the theremin instrument you know theremin 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 it's like that instrument it's like a pole and it's electricity and the person that plays it they go yeah. woo, woo, yeah. woo. it'll be like that so there's no edges to it okay, okay? so a little crescendo at the end of those notes yeah. same place again because it's good to do the rhythm before yeah. <laughs> really good. Yeah. I, now can you do it, um, now you're doing the crescendo, so now we're getting into super legato. Now can you, can you make it, um, can you do a special on it so that it's, it's, um, that the line, now the line's going like this, yeah. can the line go like right. that? Yeah. So it's really, like a snake, like yeah. a snake charmer. Yeah. Okay. Same place again. legato thing uh -huh. go inside okay. so now it, it sounds beautiful um, bring the eyes away so you're not in them anymore even if you close the eyes or if you come up or something that it's not mm -hmm. not two people mm -hmm. you're in a you know it can come open and close but it's so just really trippy Okay, and then when you finish the last line, yeah. there ha this little thing, mm -hmm. I need to see the click yeah. back into the ping a Yeah, you want to try it one more time? Yeah. Okay, it's really good. <laughs>
comments? I, uh, it's, a, it's, a, um, it's a thing about the attention spinning it, spinning it a little bit this way. Inward. Yeah. It's a, it's a comment. It's not, it's not, it's not a comment, but it's a theme for me. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> so I'm really glad to... I pinpointed that. that. Yeah. yeah, because I um, because it, it's such a fantastic piece of music, and yeah. it's so rich in your voice. Oh, it's like your instrument is just so full and gorgeous and lush. And so when if you just get into the zone and let all those other mosquito things go and just get into that zone and inhabit. You know, I, sometimes I talk about incorporating the piece, the corpus, the body, become the piece, right? So incorporate the music in you, and that's all you have to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so we know what to do with the piece now. Yeah. Um, do you want to sing, I mean, do you want to just, we probably don't have time to work on it, but do you want to sing the Britain so I can hear it? Yeah. I'd love to hear it. Yeah. yeah.
super, super beautiful, really beautiful. And again, this piece doesn't need any, I mean, because she's so, she's so exposed mm -hmm. that a couple times you started to move your hand and then you, and then you didn't, which was a good choice because she, just to stand there and be so exposed like that is really super, super powerful. Mm -hmm. um, and, and brava, I mean, it's perfect for you, perfect. Do you have a, any, we're, we're going to stop in a second. Do you have a question for me about anything or? No, I, I just want to ask lovely things. That's yeah. good. Yeah, and it's something I, I yeah, in Google speak very much. And yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, know how to. Yeah, you know what the next steps are. Yeah, super. Thank you so Thank much, you. Sophie. Yeah. <laughs> Um, do we have another another quick question in between? Anybody? No. Okay. So Stephen, Stephen, our counter tenor. Who is Stephen? Hey, there you are. Hi. Come on down. You're the next contestant. <laughs> Oh, I'm not taking a break. I hope that's okay. I didn't take a break. <laughs> Bravo! Hi, Stephen. Nice to meet you. So what would you like to start with? Just hand it to me. Sure, let's start with Ervarmadish. Okay. I'm going to go sit down. I'll put this on. I'll find so many microphones, <laughs> so little time.
So, um, sorry, I've got all these microphones on me now. Um, tell me, uh, did you feel, uh, it was very beautiful. Thank you. Um, did you feel like you were in the zone from the beginning, or was there a point when you really got into the zone? <laughs> the latter, of course. <laughs> so, can you pinpoint it? <laughs> I think it was probably around Shawa here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I felt like you st you got into the flow somewhere around there, and at the beginning, um, I mean, I was super moved, um, and I thought, oh, beautiful color and so on. But I felt like you weren't in this. Like, because it has to, I think this aria, right, it, it's quite hor horizontal line, right? So, so it's got to be super syrupy, and I felt I didn't have the syrup going on, right? So can we start it again? And there's one, there's, I'd just like to hear the start in, in optimum okay. performance. And I also want you to, s when you sing Mein Gott, I think it has to be personal. Erbarme dich. Mein Gott, each time. Observe that, because I, I didn't feel it enough there. The second part, um, the B section was great, and, and in general, I also liked that once he was in the zone, then I was totally happy. But this opening section and the, the personal quality of it, I'd like to just get that right, and then I want to do the Britain, okay. because the Britain has a lot of detail. So let's start it again. I'm just going to stay here by you. Maybe just a few bars, whatever it is. <laughs> Yes, good, good, good. The opening was really good. Now, can you really sing Mein Gott? And I need to hear the G of Gott. Dich, mein Gott. Give a little, a little stop, like double the G on Gott, basically. One more time, start again. In the zone, in the zone. Okay, good. Now, I'm going to be super picky. Now I heard the double G, but it doesn't have to be so long. I heard mine got, but <laughs> mine got. So it has a little more plosive qu quality, and then we're good. Okay. One more time. Yes, yes, good, good. I don't need to mess with this. It's really beautiful. And if you, if you audition for this and they, I mean, everybody has their idea of how they may want the soloists to be. And I think it, they would be very wise to choose you. Um, and the only thing is in your decisions about how personal is it is the relationship with, the, with God. So how personal is the relationship with the text? So are you um, the witness and you s just sing the music and as beautifully as you can and you make the sound? Or are you all, how, what is the ratio of personal investment in the story of the text? And that I think you need to be just super, super clear on for yourself. 
when you audition or when you are singing it in a concert or whatever, that it's, it's very clear your position. You know what I mean? Let's hear the Britain. Yeah, I know a bank where the wild thyme, is it wild thyme grows? Yeah, yeah wild thyme blows. Blows, yeah, okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> Did you sing the whole role yet? Or are you still working on it? Yeah. I'm working on it. Wow. He's a really good actor. Seriously good actor. Thank you. Yeah. I'm like, hmm, master class. Um, 
really. Because I love the way you use your gestures, and there's a, you can always tell if somebody can move, even if they, if they do nothing or even if they just do one thing. And you just, you have such a natural way um, with, with your hands and your gesture and the transitions. I love the timing of your transitions. It's really good. Um, it makes sense to me, to yeah. my mind. So I'm super happy with that. Um, I'm only going to pick on a couple of things. <coughs> voiced consonants versus unvoiced consonants. Yeah. Where are you from? I'm from America. Right, so it should be amazing. Um, <laughs> I'm from Canada. But, no, but I mean, this is your native language. So um, the voiced and unvoiced need to be more clear. And when you have, un when you have voiced consonants, like her lies or her eyes, I want to hear the z on the pitch, and I'd like to hear a schwa vowel after the voiced consonant also on the pitch. Mm, okay. So you're extending the line of vowels, right? Um, and my second request is that now I, I'm glad you sang the Bach first, because now I know like the basis beauty sound, right? Don't rob us of the beauty sound, even when you're getting expressive. Like word, like hateful, you messed, I mean, you kind of dirtied up the word a bit. I don't think you should. Okay. Keep the beauty on the sound, because you're such a good actor. We'll see everything in your face and in your gesture. So just keep the beauty on the sound. Okay. Yeah, you don't need to add a, a special color on it. I don't think, I kind of, I was like, oh, too bad, you know? So keep it super beautiful. Okay, so let's start it again, and I'm, I might stop and start you when I don't hear the voiced consonants the way I want, okay? Okay. Welcome, wanderer. Okay, now, here's a way to elongate. <laughs> <laughs> you're, I'm going to elongate this for you. So you're going to, instead of welcome, wanderer, you're going to sing Welcome, wanderer. Welcome, wanderer. So you're going to be already on the sound, and I want you to spin it. Okay. Okay. Don't go too super straight there. It's the first two words you sing. We. I want to hear the voice. Okay. Right. Yeah. Welcome, wanderer. Yeah, even more. Welcome, wanderer. Well, so it's like a 16th note before. Welcome, wanderer. Okay. I know it sounds like big here, but in, a, in an opera house, it's only going to sound normal. Yeah. And the other one will sound like we won't have heard the note before you moved Welcome on. Welcome, wanderer. Yep. <laughs> Welcome, wanderer. Good. Now, one more thing. Sing through the middle uh, part of Wanderer. Wanderer. Okay. Let each of those play the pipe of it. Wanderer. So I get all three syllables. Don't come off the resonance okay. at this point, okay? And I will let you go past these two words now. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Welcome, Wanderer. Flower there. So don't close on er. Flower there. Same, same mouth position, bugle mouth. Hast thou, hast thou the flower? Time, so add a schwa in there. Where the wild time blows, blows, two syllables. Time blows. Okay. 
Okay? So we're adding schwas in between everything. All right. Okay? I want a little more, um, a little more energy from the gut on your consonants. Yeah. One more time. I know a bang. <laughs> to hear the d time. Okay. So it's so that's going to make the that's going to make us understand the word wild. Okay? I know a bank. One more time. I know a bank where the wild time Okay, good. Now, I'd like you to do the same thing again 30% more. So now you're doing what I asked, but I want 30% more of everything. All right. Of those those things I asked for. And no, make sure it's no. It sounds a bit like no. Mm. Okay. Sounds like a Midwestern accent. Ah. <laughs> I know. I'm a <laughs> I know. I'm a It's extreme, but it's, it's not extreme. And it's going to keep you on the resonance of the sound all the time. Otherwise, it becomes too precious. Mm. And you need to fill the hall. Okay, one more time. So, what's the difference? It's a whole lot more of everything. Yes. What about the tone? I was more satisfied. And why were you more satisfied? It, it, well, because I was more engaged, it gave a more, more of a fullness to the rest of it. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> and, the cons and, and it's not louder, it's just more complete. You know, which I really like, and it and it's more hypnotizing because we, it's the pronunciation of those the mu oh yeah roses musk roses. Make sure it's a real O. You sing roses, mm. roses, pure O. Um, but it it's like the pronunciation of all these flower names is the hypnosis, right? Mm. You're like, you know, he stands there going, what? I don't, what? You know, but you just hypnotize. It's like when those eyes go, you know, those whirly eyes. Okay, so this is all good. Let's keep going. Okay. Next part. Okay, let's stop. Can that be, so what's your subtext for this line? Who's Titania? Titania is my deplorable. Deplorable wife, right, but you still love her. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> um, right, so you still love her. And so we have to have a whole bunch of layers because this is revenge, this is also adoration, this is also regret, this is also so there has to be all these layers of emotion in that. 
There sleeps, sleeps, right? Real E, because it sounds like slips when you sing it. There sleeps Titania. When you pronounce her name, I mean, everything about your relationship with her has to be in the pronunciation of her name. And the tone has got to be very, very horizontal. Think Air Barmody tone. There sleeps Titania. So don't rob us of tone with syllables or sausages, right? <laughs> there sleeps Titania sometime of the night. Okay? Everything that is in that entire relationship, all the good, all the bad, is in you watching her sleep and what you're about to do. Okay, really good. Even now I want even more. So sleeps, make sure you spin it. Don't don't go spin straight spin. So spin, spin, spin. Titania. Let's do a stretch this way so that the ah expresses the most of everything. Yeah. Something these flowers, what is it? Lulled in these flowers. Lulled in these flowers. And this is a very Britain flower, so it's one syllable, flowers. Mm. Um, <laughs> I learned that in England when I was working on Rape of Lucretia with the original Lucretia. And, she's, and I said, and I had the line, uh, she said, Lucia says, Oh, what lovely flowers. And in Canada, we say flowers. And I was like, it's so weird because Britain only wrote one syllable for a two syllable word. And then Nancy Evans goes, flaws, my dear, flaws. <laughs> so flaws. Lulled by these flaws. Yeah? I think, that, I think we can have a little more. Let's go from, from, from this. So that, can you just tell me what is his intention? The whole thing? Uh, of this, of this, uh, what I mean, what is his in by what is his intention? Um, what does he expect the outcome will be? Like, what does he want? Does he want her back? Does he want her to fall in love with him again? Does he want her to fall in love with someone else? Does he want her to die? Does he want her to, does he miss their relationship and he wants them to be back together? I think he misses her, but it's still. He's mad and his ego has been wounded. Yeah. Right. So he's in an existential struggle. Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Uh, so let's, we need that in it, all of that galvanizing. Yeah. So let's go from lulled. Uh, let's go from there sleeps Titania.
um, full of hateful, hateful, don't get too edgy on the word hateful, on fantasies, because uh, he goes really into this super weird zone harmonically. So let it become almost like a cartoon as far as like it, like let it be that you actually um, hypnotize yourself mm -hmm. in in that by following those pictures. You have gone to the dark side, right? <laughs> so let's let you th all, spell those notes out for us, okay? Mm -hmm. So and filled with hateful from there. Now some of it. So mm. stay on the stay on the sound. Take take that. Take thou some of it and seek through this grove a sweet Athenian lady is in love with a disdainful youth. Anoint his eyes, but die from the next day he espies maybe the Shalt know the man by the Athenian garments he hath worn. Yeah, really good. I really love his his singing, his instrument. I love how you negotiate the lower register. It's fantastic. It's really cool. <laughs> yeah. You. So we have to stop. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>
sorry very many times? Yes. Okay, so you know it really well. Yeah. Did you do the roll? No. Okay. Um, beautiful, and I love the color of the instrument, and you have this gorgeous full top. Uh, I mean, uh, the, the although I weep and all that, that was just <gasps> magical, really, really beautiful. I want to clean up a few things. Yes. I have a few pet peeves, as we would say, about this. Um, first of all, um, so he didn't call, he didn't write, he didn't send a text, no flowers, nothing. He disappeared for three months. Mm -hmm. And I think she's worried, for sure, and that's what I got from you. I also think she's probably a bit pissed off. So I think we need, I would like to see a little more of that, okay. like that she's, a, I would like the character to be a bit more, how could he do this? You know, like that there's like, seriously? Like I know, okay, he didn't get me, a present for my birthday, and he forgot our anniversary twice. But like, <laughs> still, no. you know. So there, let's get a little bit of anger in from the beginning. Yes. And the opening of it, I think it can be more simple. Mm -hmm. The no word from Tom, and you do a little scoopy mm -hmm. thing, and I say take it out, yeah. because this is like Haydn Mozart. Yeah. So just no word from Tom, and the schwa vowels after, yeah. no word from Tom, so that we have this, it's like she says it out loud for the first time, and it becomes real. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So let's, let's do this little opening, just from the six bars before, you know? Less, you're a little tight in the mouth. Yeah. No word, I hear no word from, no word from Tom, ra, 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 ra. A little more of that, because it's okay. your first entrance, it's an E. Yeah. So just give it a little more open here. Okay. Don't catch it so much. Yeah. No word from Tom. From, sorry, from Tom. From Tom. From a tom, from a tom. There. Okay. That's what we'll carry in a hall. That we'll carry in a hall. Okay? No word from a tom. Okay, now, no word, no word. Stay open on it. I hear you closing. Yeah. No word, no word from a tom. Like you could even practice it with like, Ah, you're not going, no word from a tom, so that it stays open, because that first impression is so important. No, no. One more time. No word from a tom, has love no voice. Okay, double the L on love. Has love no voice. Has love no voice. Yes, but can, can the L, I hear a love, has has a love, no voice. Has a love, not all. Don't go back, but forward flip L. Yeah. Has love, no voice. Has love, no voice. Good, can you give me a real ah on love? Has a love, or la, ah, ah. But I hear it going back, I want it to go in this direction. Has love, no voice. Better, and now double the V on voice. stand around and cry about this. No. He, he must need me. Mm. So it, her ego comes in there yeah. because she says, no, no, to weep is not enough. He must need me. He would never leave me because I'm me. <laughs> so 
Let's go from the four God, double the G on God. Love hears with a z, not an s. Breath, love knows with a z. Again, breath, love answers him. Love answers him across the silent miles. Okay, love hears. Love hears. Mm, can I be really, really picky? I hear the way you're pronouncing the word hears, you're going love hears, but love hears. Yeah, straight on. Love hears. Mm, can you do it more? So you, 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 you know what I mean? Yeah. You go, love hears. It's like I hear three different vowels in that. Okay. But I only need to hear the main vowel, love hears, and then the schwa at the end. Love hears. Oh, yeah. See what I mean? Okay. You're doing like a diphthong. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. Love hears. Is there a fermata on it, on goes? No? Can I just... Yes, goes, and can the z, um, can it sound like it would go on forever? So the, the cutoff of it doesn't have to be like a yeah. guillotine, but a little more romantic cutoff there. Let's do the love hears again. Love hears. One. Love knows. subtext for this because she says she changes in the middle she says quietly night oh find him and caress and then there's a change yeah so why does she say that mm. because it's first like she's just very yeah. now it's maybe like or like now she's first like um like he is somewhere and he's fine and it's just like why haven't i heard of him but maybe it's like after but she says may thou quiet find his heart yeah may, like what if he's not another what if it's not that's another? right so she like does like doubt yeah, that he yeah. She, 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 earlier, she said she was worried that uh, he's not okay. Yeah. But now, she's she's going into actually maybe his heart is divided. Yeah. So there, so we go into a different level. So that and yeah. is the ki turning point, yeah. right? So first purity, pur and may thou quietly. He maybe he has someone else. Yeah. That's the realization, yeah. the turning point. Okay, so let's go from the top of the cavatina. Oh, I didn't do it. Sharp to the A is just great. Um, 
although I weep, it knows. I think you need to breathe. Yeah. It knows of loneliness. Yeah. You don't need the breath, but we need it for dramatic reason. Got it. Um, second time, the although I weep, it knows. It. of loneliness and the expression of the word loneliness is in the O yeah. is in the purest O vowel okay. okay so when you say it knows o, 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 it knows breath it knows of loneliness okay, okay. so one more time oh. So the not back, not so far back, okay. loneliness, loneliness. Okay. But we don't need to do it now. It'll be something you'll you'll work on. Yeah. Um, guide me, O oh moon. This was all good. I want to skip to. It can, not can't. The first time, the A to the F sharp was fantastic. The G to the E, I couldn't really hear it. I was like, but she did the A to the F sharp, so fantastic. So we need that. Okay. Yeah? Um, let's go from E to count. Okay, good. Beautiful. Much better. Everybody has their own way of doing it. I heard all the notes. I'm happy. When you get to the B, he, look at the score. The crescendo is only at the end of the note, yeah. after the fermata. You start that big, you have nowhere to go. Do you have any like, <laughs> yes. any like tips how to get there? Because I actually really want to do it from like pianissimo. You already, right you you're already landed in the right place. You're already in the right place. You just need to sing it softer. <laughs> and you need to land where you landed and stay on that note. Then when the piano cuts off, then you hold it and then you do the crescendo. Okay. And then you finish the note and you wait until you can hear the air conditioning system in the room. <laughs> and then you go on. Crescendo till she's done. Ah, okay. You were in the right place, but you're crescendoing much too soon. I'll yeah. show you under crescendo. Okay. Sing on the N of moon a bit more on that F sharp cold on the N. N. Colder moon. Can you get it into the a bit more? Yeah. A colder moon. Yeah, one more time, a little higher placement. And here you don't need to do a schwa vowel on it. Mm -hmm. So just go to the mm, mm -hmm. and then it's over. And can I say, let the k of colder be the expression of the word cold. Oh, yeah. So give me a real k, because it's cold. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. 
Spell those out for me. Don't don't phrase it there. Keep it yeah. straight. Robbing the rhythm a little bit. You're going moon upon a colder heart, but a colder moon upon a colder heart. It should, the, and the, uh, the reason why I ask for that is that when it becomes very even and metrical, yeah. it's, it's as if she's going into a vortex. Yeah. And then the only thing that brings her out of it is the chord, jing, and, and, because her father calls, yeah. right? Yeah. So she's like going into this dark, yeah. uh, right? So let that happen. Okay. Let's go from ah, colder. so that it, it, it takes away the vision from your eyes. Yeah. Yeah. be a transition between my father can I desert him yeah. it was my father can I desert? my father can I desert? Oh, <laughs> I have all these things I have to do here and I'm you know, I'm supposed to help him with this and yeah so let the transition happen just from the chord and and my father can I desert him and his devotion for Fix the L on for a love yeah. who, and let it be a long line there. And his devotion for a love who has deserted me. It's like everything goes into slow motion, right? Because she's so, oh, I can't believe this happened. Yeah. So it's like the world goes into slow mo. Let it be super legato there. Yeah? yeah? Um, my father. No, so let the change happen. Yeah. My father can. Mm -hmm. My father, can I desert him and his devotion for a love who has deserted me? Think about it, think about it.
Watch when you catch things in the low articulation that you don't rob us of the tone. It's a little clenchy sometimes. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Because so I don't know because I know I do that because it's uh, yeah some of my old okay old, old habits. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's something yeah, to work out. Like, like you like to tell me when. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And strengthen. Yeah. I heard a little bit too much American strengthen. My I'm exaggerating, but you know what I mean. And strengthen, strengthen. So get off the R. Strengthen my resolve. Yeah? Okay, we don't need to do that again because we still have the aria to get to. Um, yes, uh, let's just start the aria. There's just a few little places, but we have time. So, from the cavalletta. scoop there. You are. And the thing is, it weakens it because she says, I go, not I go. Otherwise it sounds like a question. I go, bite the apple of it. I go, I go to him. So no dipping your toe in the water, no testing it. You're on. C major, right? which makes, which is exciting yeah. to, to the energy. And the other one sounds like a bad habit <laughs> and that you weren't aware of. And a lot of, I mean, a lot of us, a lot of little scoopy things come in and we have no idea that we're doing it. It becomes habits. And I'll warn you, there are some conductors that absolutely hate it. Yeah. If they hear a scoop, they hate it. And it's, you're just not gonna get past yeah. the audition. Yeah. So clean, clean, clean. Um, um, yes, um, if love be love, the it changes, yeah. it's the affect changes. So the first part is basically C major, so it's one, five, one, five, one, five, one. And now we go into a new harmonic structure. Yeah. So I think the, the first part was a lot of vertical and now we, be, we can become more horizontal. So don't get too horizontal in the first section. Mm, okay. Don't get too lyrical in the okay. first section. Be like, I, I, I was saying to Sophie about being a tubular bell and yeah. you know that that's, you are the resonator. So now you can be lyrical, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. So, mm, I don't know, if love be love. <laughs> It sounds weird. You don't need okay. it. <laughs> One more time.
on dessert. Cat, you went, cannot dessert, cannot dessert. And I was thinking, oh, this is so great, so super clean. With a voice of this size and the clean, it's amazing. All right? <laughs> so, <ca> until, <laughs> until that E flat. So, a, a few notes before? Uh, yeah. of that is yeah. very powerful. Yeah. Um, yeah, wonderful, really great, a pleasure. Thank you. Um, do you have a qu any question? We have like four, six minutes. Do you have any question for me? Is that anything? Does anyone have a question? Yeah. Must be a question, yeah. 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 You tape yourself. <laughs> tape yourself. If, yeah. Because I think it's a really big issue, and more and more conductors are wanting super clean singing, rightly so. So, um, because it sounds poppy, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, it's so funny because I still, like, I also don't like it when I hear it. Right. <laughs> it's so funny that you do it yourself. Yes. Like, it's really yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, something to be aware. Another question? Yeah, yeah. Yes. That you sometimes not always use your voice. Yeah, always. Do you also just? I always I did that myself always. And I cannot really control if I don't feel like it. Yes, because you you become the the character that you're singing. I was also wondering if you sometimes uh, is it for me it's especially with with colors. Mm -hmm. Is it for you like texture or colors or it's like the whole thing? Yeah. Do you hear colors in music or something? Oh yeah. Yeah, so I don't know if you were here earlier when um, when uh, Sophie was singing and um, and I commented on what she was wearing and I said it was perfect for the character and I also think what you're wearing is perfect. The color's just right for Anne and you know she didn't. Um, and I I will choose a, a gown or an outfit that is yeah it's the texture it's the color like for Hans Abrahamsen's piece I always wore this very pale pink dress and then actually 
after I'd sung the piece like 25 times or 30 times, I changed the dress. And I talked to Hans about having changed the dress to a different color and a different character because she had become darker. Mm. And um, it's a very conscious choice. Um, and I do associate colors with music and colors with character and texture. And it's, um, and when I put on the outfit that is right for that piece, then I feel somehow also more confident and more like I, I don't get as nervous because I'm playing that character now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why also, like I said earlier, I always get to the theater or the concert hall really early. I really like to take a lot of time to get ready because I feel like there's a transformation that you, you go into the character of what you're going to be singing. And um, yeah, I think it's, and, and that can be also for like just your day to day, like if you're singing in your group lesson or master class, whatever it is. I remember when I was in, um, in Michigan going to a friend's master class and that's where I learned that because Martin Katz, this pianist, he always used to make his students wear what they were singing, you know, and it was very, and I thought, oh, that's really smart, yeah. One more final question, yes. Yeah, because I, I didn't, yeah, so the other night, because we had the Strauss Metamorphosen and then we had La Voix Humaine, and it's really a dramaturgical whole piece, so I didn't want to come on and take a bow, because if I had come on and taken a bow, it would be Barbara, and I didn't want to be Barbara. I wanted to be the character of Elle that conducts the Metamorphosen, that is on the film in Metamorphosen, and that is part of La Voix Humaine. So I wanted to prevent the possibility for applause and a bow, and that's why I kind of snuck on before and just sat there. Because it, you know, you know what it's like. You come on and you, and it totally changes everything. And then you have to, ch you know, I didn't want to greet the audience. Mm -hmm. I wanted them to come into that zone. And sometimes I do that with certain pieces. If I bring the focus really small before a concert begins, I don't allow when I'm conducting. Um, I don't allow the audience to applaud before. But it was a, I mean, there are, there were so many levels. Also, in 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 you you notice that like. I raised my arms to start the Strauss, and I had told the orchestra I'm not going to conduct for the first uh, 24 bars. So I just had my arms like this, and they had to start playing without me. And slowly, by the time the first violins came in, I was with them. And it was also like the messaging of that was on a lot of levels because I was also I'm playing with hierarchy, and I'm I'm interested in that. I'm interested in of course they can start it without me you know, of course they can. And so this gesture, and then that they play and that I don't move, that it, was, it was all part of the character and the statement of that character. Yeah. Yeah, I think it has to do with presence. And I think there's a wonderful book that you might want to read by Patsy Rodenberg, which is called Presence. She also wrote another book called The Right to Speak, and they're both fantastic books. She's the, she was the um, voice and diction coach for the Royal Shakespeare Company. And mm -hmm. Anyway, Patsy Rodenberg, and it's called Presence. And I th it has to do with, I for me, it has to do with being where I am at that moment. So I really wanted to hear Antoine and Aphrodite and Ziad sing. And either I was gonna have to wait backstage, but I'm 50 now, so I'm old enough and I have enough experience that I know that I can sit there and Hugo Wolf are not really tough for me. So I thought I can sit there 
for 35 minutes without being able to stretch. I, I can do that as long as I'm with them. If I leave, let my mind wander while Ziad is singing and I'm thinking about my words, which happened a couple of times because um, I was getting a little worried, I had to just keep bringing my attention back. And I have to say, like, of course, like, you know, mental, f mental focus exercises, mental discipline, meditation, uh, and different forms of meditation, like, those are all going to be super helpful in, in strengthening your mental focus and discipline and bringing your attention to where you want it to be. So I think it's worth, you know, learning some basic methods and starting to practice that because, you know, I don't, I'm not like someone that sits down 25 minutes a day and meditates, but I have done and I do, you know, on a regular basis and I find that's really part of the secret. And sometimes, like when I'm on stage, I remember when I sang the, the Rossignol um, of Stravinsky with Berlin Phil and Boulez was there and it was a scary, 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 and it's so exposed. And I remember I sat on stage with, and I, I was simply in a complete meditative state until I had to sing. And all I was doing was concentrating on my breath going in and out. And that's why I was able to do that, because I was scared. And I just kept coming back to the breath. And, and that's training. And that's, it's simply hard work. It's simply, like, I'm not, I, you know, if you had seen me when I was in university or in conservatory, I was very, very good. I wasn't the star. I was one um, among several very, very good people. And I just work super, super, super hard and discipline. And I think that's actually very inspiring because what I'm saying is you all can do that. You can all do that. Everyone can do that. We all can develop our capacity for hard work and discipline. It's, you know that saying, um, hard work beats talent if talent doesn't work hard, <laughs> right? I love that saying because it doesn't matter how talented or gifted you are. You might be able to win, you know, Denmark's Got Talent or whatever for an audition, but can you sustain a whole career with that? No, it's the long, it's the long term. So. sitting down for a long time? Do you have like anything that you think specifically before you start singing? Just the breath or? Um, lowering the breath. Um, yeah, it's hard, like oratorio, you know, in a cold church and your legs are really cold. The trumpet players have the same thing. They sit there for ages and then all of a sudden they have to be like amazing. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with us. Um, uh, like also what you wear, like wear long underwear underneath your gown leg warmers around your knees, you know, body suits, like all that kind of stuff to keep the body warm. Um, uh, and I think like, you know, very, like humming is our best friend, right? I think we all, we all work on humming. And I think just keeping the voice, like even when you're just sitting there like, <coughs> nobody even can, can hear it, you know, if you're not amplified. And, and it, it just keeps the voice moving a little bit. But I mean, it's perfectly possible to go for 20 minutes or half an hour without singing and then sing. There's no reason why we can't do that. I mean, once you're warm, you're more or less warm for quite a while. So. One or two more. I know we're, behind, we're over, but or shall we call it a day? Call it a day? And I just, on behalf of the voice department and the Broadway Academy of Music, thank you so much. Thank you to the Sonnen Foundation. Thank you also to Bebe, who sent this. Bebe! Thanks. So, so much. You're welcome. We hope to see you soon again.